Hello everyone. Today, a very interesting story awaits you. And before it starts, I would like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. In a county ruled by a proud disciple of a late swordmaster, a ceremony will soon begin. Walking along the large corridors of the empire, one could hear the young count going crazy. A servant was walking. Stopping at the right door, he called his master to go down to the people. And behind the doors, there was a monologue about what he didn't say to his reflection, how much he didn't praise himself, but he couldn't tear himself away from the mirror. The young man could not believe that now he, C. Vey, would become the Lord of Falcon County. He had a plan to get close to the locals, but he was distracted by screams on the street. An army was advancing towards the doors of the palace and wanted to kill the Lord. They needed to avenge the goddess Zoe. There have already been casualties from this battle and the cries called for them to fight to the end until Sive comes to them. The leader of this rebellion shouted that the young lord must be killed to end the abuse of innocent girls in the empire. As you know, the people are always right, and Sive was hanged right at the entrance to the palace. Everyone watched him dangle in his shorts. They began to remember his misdeeds. No one could remember that there was such a nasty boss in the kingdom. In exchange for the life of Saint Zoe, who committed suicide, the leader of the riot wanted to castrate the corpse of the young villain. He cut off the causal part of the rapist. After that, I noticed electric discharges on my sword, which meant that the mission was completed and it was time to return. Our days. He loved playing around with the time machine. He liked to participate in history and change the course of events. The lid closed and the journey into the past began. The hero often arranged such entertainment for himself over a long space. I especially loved the unknown. It was an unreal flight, and you never know where you will end up, whose life you will need to live. Ahead lies a familiar empire. The king holds a newborn whom he names Sive. He who kills the devil becomes the devil himself. Our guy became the young gentleman whom he recently castrated in front of all the people. The young man wet his outfit with tears. He prayed, repeating that he did not want to repeat the fate of the previous lord. His words were heard by the invincible system. The counterattack system reminded him that he would receive rewards for hooliganism, and if he sat idly by, he would become retarded. Sive didn't like that metallic voice and always pushed it out of his head. The program warned that the player would eventually die if he did not make the necessary settings, because fate simply cannot be changed. But the guy knew why the Lord was killed in the last game and did not want to step on the same rake. He has a mature plan. To be a good person, then no one will touch him. And the invincible system warned that the future had already been written. Only if you improve your strength can you change the future. The hero had no choice but to accept the terms of the program. A connection occurred, and the young man heard a list of villainous missions for which he would receive various rewards. He heard that he had to desecrate the holy nun as the Lord himself had done then. Then the system said that I needed to start adding to the collection of cat girls on a group date. At some point, the guy began to like his role. Everything was tempting, and the young man realized that if he listened to the program, he would end his life hanged near the palace. But the system insisted that if the missions were not completed, he would be left without a prize. She also clarified three options, castration, young lolicon, or death, after which the counterattack will be free. The young man was not satisfied with any outcome of the game and he showed his anger. The system disappeared as soon as the door opened and the servant called to the Lord to hurry up. After all, the ceremony will begin soon and the people are already waiting for their new ruler. All the way to the square, Sive was thinking about how to change his fate. He did not hear the crowd who were talking much about their young Lord. The children who came with their parents to watch this event were delighted with the knights in armour. The girls secretly dreamed of being alone with a handsome gentleman. Each dreamed of making him fall in love with her in order to become the first lady. The people rejoiced and only the young man himself had no time to laugh. He rode, realizing that he would become the Lord of Death. In the finale, Sive raised his symbol of government, showing the people that they were now under his protection. The crowd responded to the new ruler with admiration. Everyone shouted congratulations loudly. When everything was over and the guy returned to his chambers to take a break from the magnificent ceremony, the counterattack system began to pursue him again. The program came to give the frightened guy villainous tasks. 
He had to steal a candy from a child, trample the garden beds, and the third thing was to hang and beat up a local. The young man was surprised how these tasks would help him be like a lord. Apparently, the system has failed and wants to invite him to become not a master, but a bully. But it's easy, because the tasks are for beginners, but later it will become more difficult. For this, he receives rewards, and if all tasks are completed, he can gain the ability to improve his strike. Sai Vei wanted to go to bed and rest and asked that the program not appear so suddenly again because they might see it and expose him. But he reassured the Lord, saying that only he could see her. Counterattack told her not to yell at her anymore and reminded her that she could be contacted with her thoughts. After this reminder, she switched off. Without wasting any time, Sive went to begin his tasks. He called with him the servant who was polishing the sword so that he would accompany him on a walk through the territory under his control. The young lord mercilessly beat the horse to make it gallop faster, and the guards behind did not understand why their master was being chased like that. The tour of the empire was quickly coming to an end. Suddenly, the guy got off his horse and approached the boy with candy in his hand. The kid recognized the new lord and the guy had already begun to turn on his charm and asked the child to obey him. The young man affectionately asked to give him the lollipop, but the baby refused and began to hide the sweetness behind his small back. The gentleman had no experience communicating with children. He was going to take the lollipop by force. Realizing that the forces were not equal, the boy began to scream. But our hero was not so heartless. The guy began to persuade the crying boy that he would give him a lot of sweets in exchange for this one. The system intervened in the process, which indicated to Sive that the conditions of the task were to take away and not to persuade him to give or exchange. He began to realize that everything was not as easy as it seemed before. The ruler snatched the candy from the boy and ordered everyone to return to the palace. The guards stood at a loss and the upset child shouted loudly that the Lord was hurting small children. Leaving the crime scene, the young man was haunted by a feeling of shame that he had to molest a child. So, the first task was already over. Having done a good job, the man carefully lowered the scythe over his shoulder. He was happy that this year there would be an excellent harvest. The Lord and his knights appeared in the field of view of the farmer. They began to trample his future harvest harshly as if they had been attacked by a colony of ants and were jumping to get rid of them. The servants and guards who remained standing on the road were at a loss from the actions of the young master. They could not find an excuse for such antics and did not understand why he behaved this way. When the wheat was broken and lying on the ground, the company turned around and, at the command of Sive, began to return to their horses. To compensate for the damage, the young lord paid off with gold coins. The home team was happy about it too. And the guy was happy that he managed to deceive the system and at least slightly change the conditions of the second mission. Having returned to the city limits, the gentleman was already wondering what to do with the third villainous task. To tell the truth, he didn't really want to hang anyone up. And on the square where the lord was going, there was a company of slaves. Their owner stood in the centre and skilfully offered the girl's services and a discount on the first captive. It seemed to Sive that this merchant was quite suitable for the final task, and he confidently began to approach the trading point of the demi-humans. And then a decree was adopted in which the trafficking of girls was prohibited. And so that people would remember the new rules, the illegal businessman was publicly beaten with rods right in the square. The cat girls, touched by such an act, did not cease to admire their new lord for a long time. They understood that now luck would always be with them as long as the master reigned. And Sive was in seventh heaven because the tasks were completed. He walked towards his palace, collecting compliments and words of admiration along the way for his courageous act. When the guy found himself alone with himself, he decided that he definitely needed to celebrate completing the first level. Stripping himself of his tight outfit, the young master poured himself a glass of red wine and began to call up the counterattack system to receive rewards for his villainous missions. The program summed up the successful completion of daily tasks and began to spin the lottery wheel. Sive sipped his wine, patiently waiting for something worthwhile to come out of the prank. The wheel made two stops. Once, Dragon Slayer plate armor. Two, heroic armor, return of the saint.
The guy couldn't contain his emotions. He praised the system for his absolute luck. Having put on his new armor, the Lord hurried to try out the new, new thing and went to look for someone brave opponent who could withstand the blow. The gentleman went out to the training ground where a fencing lesson was taking place. There were many students, which means there would also be enough people willing to fight the Lord. Clement, Sivay's subject, was surprised to see his master in class. He asked the young man how he would be useful, and the hero said that he needed to try out his new armor with someone. Having been in many battles, the servant knew that the armor was unusual and immediately offered his candidacy so as not to expose inexperienced students. Having taken their starting positions, the duelists began to tune into their inner channel, and after greeting each other, they began their battle. Clement did not wait for the blow and gave in to the young knight. He sped up with his attack. In battle, everyone is equal and there are no privileges. C. Vey did not think that his opponent would be so fast, he was aware that the servant was a former warrior and had not yet lost his power. The guy prepared to hold the defence. The young man reflected a strong blow, pushing the enemy to a safe distance. Clement stayed on his feet, catching his balance. The former warrior had already noticed that his master's strength had increased, and the guy again asked his opponent to strike. The servant, ready for anything, decided to make not one, but two quick throws, but the young man managed to fight them off. They had enough time to burn off excess energy and thoroughly try out the new armour. Their duel lasted until late in the evening. Both sat at the table and drank warm tea and talked. Clement noticed that the young master's armour increased his defence, and the satisfied Sive thanked his opponent and said that without such an experienced warrior, he would not have been able to understand this. Beautiful girls, in the guise of cat girls, vied with each other to recognize how magnificent and wonderful their master was, and at that time, their idol was fighting in turns with the knights on the training ground. Lord was at the peak of his popularity. He was invincible, but lying in his bed. He had this dream, and the young man laughed out loud with pleasure, demanding more and more fights. And all this time, in the time machine, the player himself was watching him. He was connected to the game Continent of Cain, and it was shown to him like a trailer. Waking up from a heavenly dream, C. Vey felt as if someone was watching him. But not seeing anyone nearby, he decided that it was his imagination. Before you had time to come to your senses, the system turned on and announced that a player would soon arrive in the city of Chen Guang. This information shocked the confused young master even more. He pressed the enter button on the touchscreen and began watching the events. This was a battle that took place in his empire, where in battle the god of war and flame begins a duel with the lower gods against the rules. The goddess Malorn acts as a protector of wildlife. The girl tries to resist the fiery dragon, but the enemy's strength is greater than anything. The giant monster begins to squeeze in its powerful paw the body of a fragile warrior girl. The dragon does this slowly so that the goddess dies a painful death. But the protector of the lower deity of the wild, realizing that she will not survive, still behaves belligerently. She, writhing in pain, scares the god of war and flame that she will definitely return. Having finished with the goddess, the dragon did not understand the use of her return. Their deity was lost, and the race of demi-humans she protected would be destroyed. After making sure that no one else wants to fight him, he leaves the sky above the city. The man, who was hiding his face under the hood, held out a blue crystal. It was Saint Zoe who was looking for a guide in human form so that he could free all subhumans. There were a lot of people around, but she chose the young gentleman, to whom she handed the stone and said that by accepting it, he would become Ye Hao. The sparkle of this crystal was displayed in the eyes of the confused young man. He had to lead an army of spirits and save the demi-humans. And C. Vey, staring at the screen, could not understand the scene. He regretted that he had missed conversations when he played the game. A huge flying chariot drawn by a griffin hovered in the sky. This magical winged creature was driven by Clement, and the young master sat alone in the carriage. Until they arrived, he had time to figure out the sequence of upcoming events. Now the game seemed very realistic. Before her death, the goddess Malorn collected the remnants of her powers into a blue crystal, which ended up in the possession of the main character. This artifact can summon a spirit, which is the player. Now the game did not seem harmless. 
C. Vey realised that he had been chosen as a worthy representative of the gods. But what kind of deity called him to this world and what goal needs to be achieved? Clement dared to ask the young lord why he decided to go to the border city of Chen Guang so early. And the young man, realising that the servant would still not understand anything, said that it was necessary to check if everything was in order with the territory. And this city is just the beginning of the starting point. Hearing the Lord's intentions, the servant believed that the people would be happy and support the Lord. Clement warned the guy that he might be shocked by what he saw. Arriving in the city of Sive, he was shocked by the picture he saw. The land was neglected. The people were in poverty. What did the last Lord do? The servant hurried to answer the master about the past ruler, who was from a family of indestructibles. He was called Count Kalant. His idol was Yan Long Gang, so his first priority was duels. The young man was furious. He remembered the former balding ruler very well, and Clement tried to tell everything he knew about these territories. Some extraneous sounds of scandal distracted C. Vey from acquaintance with the neglected state of the city. The Lord decided that this also concerned him and went to look for where the screams were coming from. The guy saw the company beating a werecat. They called her names and demanded that she call her brother for help. With their showdowns, they attracted everyone who was on the street. The hooligans kicked their victim. A couple passed by and wanted to take part in the release of the captive. The girl was dressed as a nun. She was in a hurry to save the cat girl from the clutches of the villains, otherwise they would kill her. However, the young man stopped her, saying that this way she would be exposed. Her companion asked to wait until all the heroic spirits gathered to put an end to the bullying and free all the subhumans in the city. While the couple was deciding what to do, the hooligans had already interfered with their actions. Right on the square, they were punished for their actions. See, they hurriedly went to the crime scene. In front of an astonished crowd of eyewitnesses, the young lord was going to stand up for the defenceless girl. The ruler could not think of anything else but to spank the hooligans in a soft place. In the young man, it was as if a parent had woken up and decided to show all his paternal upbringing. Among the people, there was that same couple who decided not to interfere in the situation. Both decided to leave the street to wait for the right moment. When the scene was over and everyone began to leave. As always, a counter-attack system suddenly appears. The program began to update because a significant player was discovered nearby. Hearing this, Sive began to look around, thinking that he could recognize him among the people. Now the young man had access to the function of visualizing information data, and he gladly wanted to use the new ability and find out what was new. He could find out the personal information of those below or equal to his own level, as well as the approximate information of those whose level was higher. Sive began the acquaintance with himself, forgetting that he had a beaten cat girl in his arms. From everything he read, he realized that he was quite popular and his fame was only growing. Then the system moved to Clement. It turned out that the personal servant's reputation in the city was in the thousands and his strength was six levels higher. The Count with Envy finished reading the abilities of his servant and the program congratulated the hero on receiving a new function. If he changes the ending of the game, he will be awarded the Chains of Fate. Sitting the rescued girl into the carriage, Sive still continued to listen to the counterattack. She suggested that the next scene after which the player will be hanged is the kidnapping of Saint Zoe. Confused by such innovations, the young man was not very pleased. Even their name, Chains of Fate, was not very attractive to him. But the computer explained that the gifts were needed to fill the gaps in the branches of the Child of Fate. If you collect all the shackles, you can kill him. The real child of fate is Ye Hao. He has five branches. If Sive avoids death five times, he will win. There were also conditions that he should not attack Ye Hao first, but he could do whatever he wanted. The guy can also attack the player if he threatens his life. The young lord decided not to rush because he would not be interested in immediately neutralizing the player. He thought that he needed to wait until his opponent got stronger. The guy has already unlocked the first storyline, which means he is one step ahead. All he has to do is summarize and find what will happen in the next scene. C. Vey swiped the sensor to see the game history. In the future, he saw how in the square, Yahao and Saint Zoe would begin to save subhumans from the hands of slave owners. 
However, they will encounter the Empire's guards. The offended guards decide to seize the nun and sacrifice her to the Lord. And so began the War of Spirits with the Army of the Empire. After the victory, the goddess and Yahao captured the border city of Chengguang. This was just the beginning of their plan to free the subhumans. The young lord watching this celebration was angry. He understood that he could not do anything to the main character, but no one forbade him from harming other players. The young man decided to visit the Zheng Chong residence. Goodbye met him at the gate. He saw the gentleman's golden lion badge and asked how he could be of assistance. Sivay requested information about the guard in order to be aware of his importance in the game. The captain had the strength of a mid-level blade master and a couple of abilities in the form of whirlwind and heroic strikes. The Lord noted that having small rewards, the guard is very talented and was able to combine his abilities perfectly in the game. However, this did not help him avoid death at the hands of the main player. The young man asks goodbye to call the chief of the city. Thus, he wants to get ahead of the events of the scene in order to receive the second treasured Chains of Fate. Knowing that the boss was having fun with the girls, he couldn't think of anything suitable to say that he was busy. But the Lord was determined and hastened to find the right character on his own. Opening the door with his foot, Sive saw how the head of the city was secluded with the girls. Not recognizing his master, Mengil initially ordered him to leave because he was busy. But a second later, he was already on his knees in front of the guy and said that he should have informed about his visit so that they could properly receive such a respected guest. Studying the personal file of the snotty man Sive, I could not understand how such simple skills as an instant attack and a stabbing blow made him the boss of the entire city. A little man with a sharp moustache told the gentleman that everything was peaceful in the city. He tried to show that he was worthy of his rank. In response to his denunciation, he heard the verdict of the new ruler. Sai Vei informed him that while he was having fun, the Inhumans were on their way to take over his city. He then demoted Mengil to captain of the guard and took his place as mayor of the city. Leaving the palace, the guy headed to the main gate to go to the city. A man with a moustache was chasing him behind him. Hearing that Mengil was now captain of the city, Goodbye rushed to the young ruler for an explanation. Now it became even more difficult to get to the horse because the Lord had two characters at his feet who begged him not to make hasty reductions in service. To keep everyone happy, Sai Vei appointed Goodbye as his bodyguard. And having instructed him to find a spacious room in the palace, he finally climbed onto his horse. Having given out all the instructions, the Lord hurried to find Ye Hao and the goddess Zoe. The cat girl rescued on the square still continued to accompany her saviour. Mengil saw that a beaten Neko was next to the ruler, and he realised that the young man sympathised with non-humans. He ordered to find a company of pretty cat girls for Sive and deliver them to the master's chambers. Now he had a plan to regain his former place by any means. The man with the moustache longed to be the head of the city again. Examining the girl who began to come to her senses, the guy noticed a fluffy tail and decided that she was a squirrel. He was about to touch her, but suddenly she began to awaken. Delighted that the girl had come to life, the young man began to tell her how she got into his chambers. Her name was Laurie, and she looked scared because she thought that the Lord would scold her because she had soiled his room. She rushed to beg for mercy, but the young man tried to stop the squirrel. If he only wanted to punish, he would not have saved her from the bullies. The young ruler prepared a more responsible role for her, but first he wanted to win over Laurie. He asked what she needed to gain strength. The girl looked at her saviour and said that she had not eaten for a long time. Then, Sive immediately ordered to prepare delicious food for his new friend. While talking at the table, the system sounded. Counterattack told the young master to match the villain's behaviour or face punishment. This did not frighten the young man. He thought about making Laurie a pawn, which will take revenge on the players. At this explanation, the program updated the code of conduct and turned off. Then, Sive realised that as long as his actions were understandable, he could control the game as he pleased. Not even five minutes had passed before new villainous tasks began to appear. During the day, it was necessary to upset ten players, force Laurie to give a massage and warm the bed, and at the end, it was necessary to humiliate Ye Hao. 
after which the program reminded him that a reward awaits him for completing them, and after that new missions await him. The guy didn't have time to catch his breath before he received assignments again. Greedily devouring the treats, Laurie thought that her behaviour was to blame for the Lord's change of mood. She brought a delicious turkey leg to the ruler, thinking that he was very hungry. But the Lord refused. He playfully ruffled his hair and asked the girl to call him by his first name only. The young man remembered Laurie's recent phrase, and bending over her, like the wolf over Little Red Riding Hood, he asked if she had changed her mind about repaying him for saving her. The answer was positive, but the end of our fairy tale was much more fun. The beast did not swallow its prey, but arranged for the maid to be provided with food and days off. In his yard, he was doing his usual business. The Punisher was famous for his particular cruelty to captives, as well as for his individual approach to each client. Begging to be released to their family, the cat girls tried with all their might not to lose consciousness, and the ruthless slave owner didn't stop beating his goods with rods. He promised that he would gather the entire family of the crying Neko at his ranch. Hearing footsteps behind him, the slave owner stopped the violence. He turned around and saw the guards. The warrior in armour said that he had arrived to get slaves for the boss. He ordered them to hurry up, and the owner of the estate noticed that the girls were unique. He hoped that he would get more for them than promised and swung at the girls to hit them one last time. But something held back his whip. The owner of the estate felt pain in his hand. New player Lin Fan came to the defence of the slaves. He did not come alone. Behind him stood an armed company of people awaiting instructions from their commander. Meanwhile, the brave young man asked the merchant if he knew that he was breaking the law, and the punisher, squeezing his sore hand, told the upstart that these were subhumans and ordered him not to interfere. He was going to drive away the uninvited guests from his estate. Meanwhile, Lin Fan threw a bag of gold to the owner of the slaves and said that he was going to buy them. More than anything else, the punisher loved the shine of gold. He opened the bag and began to examine the coins. Having come to his senses, he decided to tell the guy the whole truth, that they were being taken away. Pre-order for City Chief CV. Returning the gold back, he suggested waiting for the next batch. But Lin Fan didn't understand why he called the head of the city not Men Gil, but some Saive. The company of players, without waiting for the commander's command, began to prepare for the attack. They demanded the immediate release of the slaves. There was a smell of battle, and the Punisher hurried to run away, hiding behind the guards. The current security commander, Mengel, intervened in the scene. He had no intention of losing the cat girls to strangers. Behind him, the owner of the estate grinned slyly. The head guard introduced himself, although the players opposite had access to the character's personal information and said that they had the opportunity to beg for forgiveness. When the players saw who was standing in front of them, they realised that they would not fight him, because the difference in strength was very great. The company began to play for time and wait for its yay how. Help did not take long to arrive. The very next moment, their leader appeared on the site. He called on all divine spirits to come to the rescue for a good cause. The players perked up and gathered in a crowd to attack one Mengil. This is the only way they will be able to defeat the power of the security captain. Having chosen the right tactics and correctly distributed the forces of blows, the liberators watched how quickly their opponent was losing lives. When Mengil was on the verge of death, it was Ye Hao who dealt the final blow to him. The child of fate rose high above the poor fellow. Over his head, he prepared his powerful sword, which he skillfully controlled in battle. His blow was so fatal that not only the former Mur was knocked off, but also the scoreboard that showed that the character was out of the game. Everyone was in awe of Yahao's strength. And only one Lin Fan looked lost, he tried to understand the essence of the game. What is the secret of such a quick victory over the enemy? The winner didn't look tired at all. He did not expect any other outcome of this battle. He raised the morale of his soldiers, saying that good always triumphs over evil. Then he thanked him for his help and allowed him to divide the artifacts that Mengil owned equally. Everyone was very happy for the worthy reward and wanted to immediately go to the residence of the city commander. A group of brave men was already standing at the palace. The chief of the city was waiting for their invasion, 
he was already greeting his guests at the doors of his possessions. Sai Vei was well prepared for this meeting. He impressively towered over the rioters, which already looked victorious, and behind his back he hid his two-handed sword of a glorious lion. The company did not understand who they were dealing with, but the guy explained to them that he was aware of all their affairs. That after killing the palace people, their next goal would be to appropriate the city's treasury. And he could not allow this. The surprised rebels checked the personal information they heard from the lips of a stranger. And having convinced themselves of the truth of his words and the number of trophy awards, they realized that he was too tough for them. They began to openly resent the fact that losing would slow down their progress in the game. And they are guaranteed failure because it is logical that level 2 noobs will not be able to fight a level 44 boss. While the guys were particularly tense about this situation, the girls, on the contrary, were pleased by the young gentleman with his beauty and impressive appearance. The players paused for a long time, realizing that if they killed the Lord, it would change a lot in the game. Ye Hao soon joined them. He said that if Sivei hasn't heard of him yet, he definitely will. Without any warning, the guy prepared for his brilliant strike. Before the fight began, our hero had time to get acquainted with personal information about his opponent. Now it was clear why it was forbidden to kill the Child of Destiny first. He had an initial level of 11. There's nothing you can do, you can't ignore system limitations. And Lord Falcon also prepared his legendary weapon to strike. Ya Hao and his warriors were afraid of such wild power of the lion because they had never fought with such forces before. Seeing how his opponents were trembling with fear, Sivei promised to punish the violators for their ignorance. He didn't really want to attract the attention of the locals with the blinding rays of his sword, but there was no other way out. When the young man decided to deal with the rebels, he unleashed a lion's blow on them, after which no one was left alive. Now, in the place where the violators stood, there was a hole with a radius of 10 meters and a depth of 1 meter, and the ears of those same players were circling above it. The poor fellows still didn't understand that they were dead. Ye Hao hid behind his shield during the attack, which slightly mitigated the effects. But the guy did not understand how a strong lord of the empire ended up in the place of the head of the city who needed to be killed. A little beaten but full of strength, he decided to get to the bottom of the truth. He was going, as the plot required, to kill the young ruler. The young man began to ask clarifying questions to the gentleman. In his address, Sive heard that he does not value his subordinates and humiliates subhumans using them for personal pleasure. The guy immediately wanted to clarify these unfounded accusations. However, his opponent was not going to waste time sorting things out. He called upon the force of liberation, and the air smelled of battle again. Sivei noticed how quickly the enemy's level increased. Now he was higher than the level of the Lord himself. At that moment, the guy imagined that if Merior Mengil had been in his place, the fight would have ended instantly, and Ye Hao continued to bully the young master. Fortunately, these abilities were temporary, but only time will tell how long the Child of Destiny will be able to retain them. Hearing that Sive was far from him, the leader of the Riot of Dead Souls jumped up to the level of our hero and was about to deliver a brilliant strike. However, the guy did not think that their strengths were almost equal. The young lord had no intention of standing around and waiting to be killed. He wanted to compete with interesting players. Fate does not always give a chance to test how much he has learned to combine abilities. Having met with their mighty swords, they glared at each other. At some point, the system worked, which issued information that the guy should not attack the Child of Destiny. When the tension reached its peak, the rebel summoned the Halo of Holiness, and when he was completely covered in a protective dome, he pushed his opponent so that he lost his balance. But the young man was able to resist. He took a little breath, realizing that he had not calculated this outcome of events. However, there was definitely a way out, and he would soon find it. The first witnesses of the historical battle began to appear near the palace. Each duelist had his own fans and haters who bet on who would win. Of course, Ye Hao had more fans because his percentage of fame was higher. They only wanted him to win and admired him for his fearlessness and courage. Having heard enough flattering words, the child of fate again prepared to strike in the direction of the young lord. And the guy opposite stood motionless, 
his hands majestically placed on his belt as if he was posing for a portrait. Sive looked calm. He was confident that he would have time to take the blow, but not himself. The young man called his personal servant and he himself began to grimace that his opponent could not reach him. Before the player realized what was happening, he was intercepted halfway to the Clement target. The experienced warrior remembered the best moments of his youth. He was ready to risk his life for his master. Frustrated, Ye Hao stood in confusion. He thought that he was participating in a duel, so he looked at his new opponent with a question. Then the audience became nervous because their idol had a stronger opponent. There were rumors that the child of destiny would not be able to cope with two. Realizing that he is losing his authority, Ye Hao begins to put pressure on the young Count's conscience, telling him that this is against the rules and a disgrace to the chivalric code. But Si Vei reminded him that chivalry comes third for him. He is a ruler, and such important people never fight themselves. After his words, the Lord ordered Clement to begin the battle, and the obedient servant was already eager to fight. He, like a true defender, was in a hurry to please his ruler with a victory over the intruder who was troubling his empire. Yahao had no choice but to shield himself from countless blows. He was amazed at such a powerful power that the great earth knight possessed. The fight had to be completed, and Clement was going to finish the fight with his blow. The enemy was thrown back. It seemed that he would no longer be able to get up on his own. Scarlet blood was flowing from the player's mouth. It is possible that he suffered internal bleeding from the blow. He was never able to get up after being hit by Clement. Continuing to mock the dying man, the ruler approached the prone Ye Hao. The guy asked the Lord whether he would kill him or not, but the answer was that no one spoke about death. Sive was just trying to publicly humiliate him, as required in the task. The next moment, he gave vent to his emotions. Slaps began to rain down on the player's cheeks one after another. Having let off steam, the Lord walked away from the troublemaker and said that he would live only because the ruler was in a good mood and did not stop mocking. The young master agreed to wait until Ye Hao began to take revenge on him. But the caller was silent. Swollen cheeks and knocked out teeth indicated a complete blackout. Sai Vei and Clement went home. All that was left behind were shocked eyewitnesses who did not understand why the main character was defeated. The people discussed out loud the details and further missions. A carriage flew across the free expanse of heaven of the Empire. This time, there were two passengers. Concerned about Laurie's strange behavior, Sive asked her why she was alarmed. But the girl reassured the gentleman, saying that after the death of her father, she was going so far for the first time, so she felt a little uneasy. The ruler promised that as long as she was near him, no one would dare to offend her. And when he settles all the differences between humans and subhumans, she can live a separate life. The griffin began to descend, and Clement explained to the passengers that they had arrived at a new residence. The guys went down and began to get acquainted with the palace. They thought it was much more luxurious than that of the city chief Mengil. Taking advantage of the moment, Laurie decided to clarify whether the master really wanted her to become a maid. To which the young lord agreed and said that her job would be to take care of him every day. They walked along the corridor and the lord had already begun to tell him that Chris would soon appear. Who would teach the inexperienced girl everything? When he started talking about the first maid, love was in the air. Before the Lord had time to finish speaking, a tall girl dressed in a maid's uniform rushed at him. She pressed the gentleman tightly to her chest, not allowing him to even breathe. The maid, not ashamed of her feelings, continued to hug the ruler in front of Laurie. Seeing that the guy could not utter a word, the girl loosened her grip and said that she was bored. She thought that the Lord might find it useful and she began to remember how the ruler was worried in childhood, which greatly embarrassed the young man. It turns out that in order to finish this long monologue, you need to introduce the girls. And summing up the fluffy lorry, he says that she will be a personal maid, and she needs to be taught everything. Chris immediately fell silent and began to evaluate the new arrival. What alarmed the nanny most was the phrase, personal maid. She waited for an explanation from her lord. Laurie was a little upset listening to the story of her rescue, as if she was reliving these terrible events again. 
After listening to her master, the young nanny again noticed how quickly the young man had grown and didn't forget to notice that the little maid was a very beautiful and gentle squirrel. Chris lowered herself to Laurie's level and gently stroked the girl's cheek. Neko could not get used to being treated well and was shaking with fear. The maid promised that she would teach everything that the ruler liked. Rumours spread around Chenguang City about Ye Hao and the Lord. System players could see such news that the main character is actually the son of the villain. There was a discussion online about a recent incident between the knights. People considered the Lord of the Falcon District, Sive, to be the real main hero. Angered by these phrases about himself, Ye Hao recalled how in his previous life he was a genius of ancient martial arts and now he got the role of a hero who overthrew tyranny. He considered the Lord an upstart who, having the ability to foresee the future, constantly changes the course of events. Taking away popularity and fame, he makes the child of destiny a laughing stock among other players. This made Ye Hao cry like a teenager. The guy knew that sooner or later he will again meet his offender, whom he will tear into small pieces. Meanwhile, our lord was quietly dining when a guard entered the door and told the ruler that the priests had refused to heal Laurie. The messenger was afraid to convey the words of the Holy Father. After all, in the church, they decided that the lord was possessed by a demon because only the devil in human form could ask to heal a non-human. The young master put down his instruments and recalled that he had recently taken over the rule of the empire and his subordinates already dared to refuse his orders. The young man thought that he was not being taken seriously. Sai Vei quite often heard rumours that the servants of the papal court had become more bold and arrogant. No matter how hard the guard tried to calm the lord down, he was firm in his decision. The ruler, who had lost his appetite, ordered Clement to gather the cavalry and cordon off the church. He ordered them not to do anything until they waited for him. After the messenger, the maid entered the chambers. At first, the Lord did not recognize his recently rescued girlfriend. It was Laurie. There was nothing left of her, a poorly dressed, sad Neko. But now, a cute, mini-sized maid stood in front of Sive. The guy was pleasantly surprised. Behind her stood a satisfied Chris, who tried to help the new girl in everything. The nanny always approached the instructions of her beloved master with all seriousness. The fluffy squirrel approached the ruler and asked if she looked strange. And the young man, without losing the opportunity to touch Laurie, stroked her soft hair and replied that the uniform suits her. The guy ordered to take care of the girl while he was away. And the obedient Chris assured the Lord that upon his return to the residence, a well-mannered and diligent maid would be waiting for him. Glad that at least someone in his empire was following orders, Sive took out a small transparent bottle of red liquid. He gave this bottle to Laurie, asking her not to forget to drink it a little later. He didn't even say goodbye, because they were already waiting for him in a completely different place. Holding the vessel with the liquid tightly, the mini-maid was very grateful to the master for his care. And Chris noticed that the ruler was interested in the cutie. She tried to explain everything to the Neko. However, she became very fussed, but there was no stopping the nanny. She went on to say that in her hands is the water of life, which prolongs life and heals wounds. And it's not so easy to get it, because it flows in a spring at the palace of the Lord of the Elves. Laurie couldn't believe that the gentleman was so worried about her. Everyone, as agreed, awaited instructions from the ruler. And he, in turn, has already approached the church in order to once and for all put the clergy in their place. The Lord was already fully acquainted with Moulton's personal information, memorising his skills. The young man also did not forget to read the information about his favourite reputation in the city. Sive was about to begin his speech when something fast and black slipped past. This entity tore the lion badge from the ruler's chest. Having managed to follow the black shadow, the young master saw that it was a guy in a black cloak who was located behind the priest. Of course, our smart hero realised that this was a Knight Templar. The Lord heard that they are very powerful and have great strength. Now it's clear why the pastor of the church wants to live by his own laws because he is supported by the Templar. Drawing his sword, Sive scolded the bishop and pastor for their failure to carry out orders without giving reasons. According to the laws of the empire, they will be executed. And the Lord gave the clergy their last word.
Moulton began with an important air, but the Lord hastened to say that since he did not fulfil his oaths sworn under God and ruler, then the existence of his church was not necessary. Having issued an order that every single one of them must be killed, the young master left the black cloak for Clement, while he himself prepared to strike the priest. Having waited until the sword gathered the necessary power to strike, Sive directed the deadly flame towards the bishop. At the same time, the experienced warrior politely asked permission from the man hiding his face to become his opponent in this battle. But Clement didn't wait for an answer. Instead, the decent fighter had to defend himself from an unexpected blow from the Templar. Sai Vei is almost done with Moulton. As he expected, the priest, without support, is a completely weak old man and incapable of anything. Pushing the old man to fall, the young gentleman asked him if prayers help in dark matters to which I heard in response that God would punish the Lord. But the guy was not going to listen to this nonsense and had already prepared the tip of his sword to pierce the heart of his unfaithful subordinate. When Moulton realized that it was time for his last prayer, he began to cry out for help, saying that he was ready to give up his soul. With every word spoken, the area where the sword had been pierced became redder and redder. Sive stood rooted to the spot. He couldn't move. Still alive, Moulton continued to say that he was ready to become a faithful assistant to the Dark Forces. Our hero realised that he was connected to him through the sword, so his movements were impossible. After the last phrases, a feeling of oppression hung over the main character and a fiery wind rose. The flames from the wind began to quickly gather and eventually coalesced into a huge fire dragon. It turned out that, before saying goodbye to life, the bishop made a call and sold his soul to the dragon. Sive was bothered by the fact that he could not move, although he understood the seriousness of the problem. He starts spitting blood. Then the Lord remembers his servant. But he also cannot help because he cannot defeat the agile Templar. The ruler was worried about Clement. He began to think why Black Cloak was dominant since he was weaker. It seemed that he had been paralyzed for half his life. The young man began to think that he would die on the threshold of this damned church. A little time passed and the red glow around the Lord turned blue he no longer felt frozen. The guy began to experience pleasant sensations throughout his body. The burning sensation went away and the wounds healed. The young man relaxed right on the ground, thinking that God still exists. He began to watch his servants fight. Clement, without losing hope, tried to defeat the Templar. His opponent was very quick, as if he was waiting until the old man was exhausted so that he could finish him off with one blow. The guy in the robe was constantly smiling. He asked the duelist to give up and accept his death as quickly as possible. But Clement himself saw that he was unable to at least injure his opponent. There was strength in his eyes, but cats were scratching at his soul. The warrior understood that he was powerless to defeat the enemy. The Templar saw that Moulton was out. His strength, as he believed, was not enough to defeat the Lord. Once again, the guy realized that he shouldn't rely on others. Kneeling on one knee before his master, Clement asked for an apology for not being able to bring victory to his feet. The ruler was not at all angry with his faithful servant because the enemy was especially strong. The young master said that their opponent was not a person at all because he did not perceive pain at all. The young man knew that the Templar was just a murder weapon created by the Holy See. Offended by being called a soulless creature, Black Cloak asked C. Vey if he knew what he was talking about. After his words, his body began to transform. The Lord was right when he said that the opponent was special and should not be underestimated. Because before the guy's eyes, the Templar became a werewolf. Awakened by the words of the ruler, he appeared to finish what he started. C. Vey and Clement were preparing that there would be some kind of secret weapon, but they could not imagine that it would be like this. To understand who he was dealing with, the young master asked for personal information. In front of them was Carter who had level 44 strength. Having learned that the appearance of the werewolf is temporary, C. Vey decides that it will be easier to win this way. He tells Clement about this so that he can help maintain this Templar state as long as possible. The werewolf tried to attack the young man who was still able to dodge the powerful blows of his opponent. In their fight, there was no order of blows. Whoever had time would attack first. The guy used his signature attack, with his fearless rush, he rushed at the werewolf again and again. With each such blow, the beast's defense became weaker. When again, the entity was attacked by the Lord. 
On the other side, Clement began his attack. The werewolf realized that this was a trap and decided to act immediately. First, Sive suffered from his huge claws. The guide did not expect that his opponent would decide to fight back, gathering all his remaining strength. Not only was the Lord hit, but Clement was also knocked back with a blow from his hind paw. It was such a powerful blow that the old man destroyed one of the walls of the church. The werewolf decided to start straightening things out in order. He took Sive by the throat, whom he initially wanted to give to his highness, but now changed his mind. The young man froze, waiting for any action from the beast. The werewolf was going to eat the Lord. The guy was scared. He sincerely dreamed that his days would not end right now. The beast was ready to sink its sharp fangs into the victim, but began to feel that it was beginning to lose strength. Everything around me suddenly began to float. The picture was no longer so clear. The participants in the battle began to realize that the power of madness had dried up, and now the werewolf had become an easy target. Sive did not stand on ceremony for long and simply trampled his opponent's face into the ground. The Lord himself contributed to the fact that the beast could not complete what he started. He used a time-blocking technique. The young man waited until he stood on his paws and cut off his head. Finally, it was all over. In the hero's thoughts, there was only the phrase that the Templar would now be able to lead an honest life. Now I could breathe out. The young master was very tired from the fight. This task turned out to be quite difficult, but the thought that he would soon receive a reward warmed his heart. Suddenly, he remembers that Clement is still under the rubble and asks for the help of the knights to quickly pull out the old man. The young man's next order is to find a priest to heal the servant. However, the guard reminds that the master's desire was to kill all the servants of the church. Then, Sive asks to bring a bottle of life energy for Clement. The Lord orders everyone to search the temple and transport all valuables to the palace. This city is still uncrowded and may attract unwanted muggers. Thinking about going to other territories to capture the priests, Sive is interrupted by one of the knights. He says that while sorting out the rubble, a basement was found. But the gentleman said that there was nothing strange in this. Then the guard asked to follow him. He looked confused, and the ruler thought that the situation was not simple. Having opened the door, the young man immediately felt a terrible smell. It seemed as if he was going to vomit. It was dark in the basement, and the full picture was revealed only when the guard shone his flashlight. The room was filled with death. Dead subhumans lay everywhere. Some bodies had already begun to decompose, from which a rotten smell emanated. It was clear that they died in terrible agony. Saive managed to contain her illness, but the knight who accompanied the ruler turned out to be weak. He dropped the lantern and started vomiting. In the basement, there was a table on which lay an envelope with a seal, and behind the letter, there was something even stranger. A terrible truth was revealed to the Lord. There was a huge vessel with blood on the floor. It was not difficult to guess that the blood belonged to the cat girls. Sive took the sealed letter. He was sure that the answer lay there. It contained Moulton's appeal to the Pope. He was going to send the blood of the subhumans for the ceremony. The letter also mentioned a certain Carter, whom he asked to take care of. The young man began to think whether the Cologne Empire really attacked the Principality of Inhumans only because of the sudden outbreak of the Divine War. And what kind of dark things are happening in his empire? But the Lord refused to get involved in this. He felt safe, although his problems did not decrease, but on the contrary, questions of the empire appeared for which he did not have time. I had to sort through the notes in the priest's office until the night. Sive found several coins in the table. The fact that Moulton had so few coins seemed crazy to him. Still, fatigue overcomes the guy and he decides to lie down to rest. The day turned out to be too eventful for him. Approaching the bed, the fatigue disappeared as if by hand because something was moving under the blanket. The guy tore off the sheet. Under the bed linen was Laurie. Sive was very surprised to see his personal maid. He asked what she was doing here. This was the first time the maid was caught performing her duties. The whole situation seemed so intimate that they both became very embarrassed. The young lord immediately remembered Chris, because she was the one who was able to teach the new girl all her duties. Then Sive sat on the edge of the bed with his back to Laurie, and he ordered her to massage his shoulders because he was so tired today. 
When he was able to fully relax, various girly little things began to pour out of the girl's fluffy tail. This made the young man laugh because Laurie is a squirrel. All this time she hid all sorts of shiny hairpins and candies in her tail. He pointed out the bow to the maid and said that it could be used as a pocket. The girl realized that the owner was not going to take her treasures. She hid everything in her pocket and reminded her that it was already late. She is going to take care of her master, as Chris taught her. Saive lost his mind at this sentence. The girl was already an adult. Demi humans reach puberty at 14 years old. The system worked, warning that the hero was getting excited. But the maid is not yet ready to reproduce, otherwise she will suffer irreparable damage. She had not yet finished the massage when the gentleman fell on the bed, covering his face with his hands. The girl thought that she had done something wrong, and Sive didn't care about Laurie's feelings. He didn't sleep a wink all night, thinking about what his prize for completing the daily tasks would be. Everything went as usual, and the young man was finally able to see that the lottery with rewards was loading. The wheel stopped, and the player received 10 Lauren Warriors as a reward. The system said that a place needed to be prepared for the army and turned off. Surprised that there was only one reward, the Lord was glad because now he has elite orcs who are in no way inferior to the current soldiers. The gentleman didn't understand how resources were distributed because last time he received three awards and now only one. Sive began to notice a portal opening right in the middle of the room. Orcs began to emerge from it. They were three heads taller than the hero himself and were armed with battle axes. The warriors were a pile of muscles with a menacing bull's head. When all the knights left the portal, Sive began to get acquainted with the bloody hoof clan one by one. At the head was the leader, Bane, who could be easily recognized. There was a gold ring in the nose of his bull's head. The orc commander was level 38 and had many abilities and equipment. From his reputation in Cologne, the Lord realized that the Tauren came from the other world. Laurie entered the room. The maid was carrying a light breakfast for her master. He completely forgot to warn her that he was not alone in the chambers. Meanwhile, she was already standing at one of the Tauren. She looked at the monster in fear and her big eyes became even larger. Eventually, the maid fainted. Saive said, there is no need to scare children. But the orc said that he was a kind character and did not want to scare anyone. Then the guy realized that no one knew about their existence. The Lord ordered the new warriors to familiarize themselves with the area and the people in the castle. It will take time for everyone to get used to each other, and then he will come up with something for them. He checked to see if his sweet little lorry had come to her senses. While she was passed out, he continued to tell the news that the Bloody Hoof Clan would be watching over her. He said that for the constant protection of the border territory and victorious battles, the army would receive a good reward. Like ordinary knights, the Tauren were impressed by the words from the master. From the loud exclamations of the clan, the maid came to her senses. The little girl sat up in bed and said in horror that the castle was attacked by monsters. Laurie jumped into Sive's arms. She asked to run away quickly. But in order for her master to be saved, he needs to throw her to the mercy of these big and terrible monsters. The young man was flattered that she was ready to die for him. He reassured her because the orcs were not going to eat it at all. But the guy himself would love to try it. A messenger burst into the room without knocking and handed C. Vey an urgent letter. He saw the maid and the ruler suspiciously close to each other. The young master was angry that he was being distracted from even just cuddling with the young maid. Laurie unstuck from her adored master and bowed to leave. She was hurrying to Miss Chris's lesson, and the Lord decided to punish the guard so that he would certainly not blurt out that he had seen the scene of intimacy. Citing the fact that the soldiers' missions were becoming more and more difficult, he ordered the socks that he had accumulated over the month to be washed. Realizing that he had messed up, the messenger agreed to carry out Sive's instructions. The letter to the Lord complained that the city of Haia was suffering from an attack by orcs. It is located south of Falcon and is the area that connects the capital with Chengguang City. The head of the city, Talen Bo, asked the young ruler to help. Sive thought this was the perfect opportunity to blackmail him into meeting the players. The system intervened in the guy's thoughts. It displayed a list of new daily villainous tasks on the screen. 
He had to steal stockings from any maid from the castle, take supplies from neighbours worth 10,000 gold. And the third mission is to pester a holy girl from a tribe of subhumans. Thinking that the program knows all the hero's moves, the young man decides to be more careful with his desires. After the lesson, Laurie had some free time, which she decided to use to relax in the warm bath. Squirrels don't like to swim, but she felt like a fish in water. Hiding his well-known appearance, Sive thought how the system could give him such stupid tasks. He snuck into the bathtub to steal the stockings of a young maid. Having finished the water procedures, she wrapped herself in a towel. A warm shower helped Laurie forget a little about her recent scare from the Tauren. But a new shock awaited her. She came face to face with a certain Karateka. The thief was caught at the very moment when he was hiding the girl's stockings. The girl began to scream that a pervert had fallen for her. She started calling for help. To confuse her, C.V. decides to rip off her towel and throw it over her head so that she cannot recognize it. Thinking about how he can now sneak away unnoticed, the chief of the guard heard Laurie's screams. He and two other soldiers rushed as fast as they could to save the victim. Convinced that Goodbye is performing his duties brilliantly and that the exit route is now cut off, C.V. decides to move on to a backup plan. When the knights flew to the bathroom, they saw their master calming the young maid. He hugged the girl and said that he had already driven the rapist away. The young lord reminded the commander that order in the city must be constantly monitored. Otherwise, thieves and perverts will easily walk along the corridors of the castle. The guy decides to punish his subordinate by spending three months washing smelly socks. He, of course, could have come up with something more interesting, but he wanted to end this awkward scene as soon as possible. Once alone, Laurie saw her white stocking sticking out of the Lord's pocket. The young seductress said that if he liked something, she could just give it to him. She put her hands on his shoulders and whispered in his ear that she was ready to fulfill any request of the master. She asked not to trick the young man. Saive was in a fever. Just recently, he was almost caught by the guards and now the maid has guessed everything. The young man tried to explain his stupid act. Meanwhile, there was screaming in the higher city palace. Tail and Bo waved the answer from the ruler in front of his retinue. The mayor of the city yelled that this was pure blackmail. The lord asked, in return for his help, money, armor, and food. If the city doesn't have that much on its balance sheet, it can be arranged in installments. Tail and Bo called the lord bad names, thinking that after Haya fell, the next city for the orcs would be the capital. Having torn up the letter, the boss decided to deal with his advisors. He found one subordinate in the crowd and began kicking him as hard as he could. By beating him, the mayor of the city managed to disgrace everyone standing, calling them a rabble of unnecessary people. Doug got the worst of it. This man was collecting taxes from the local population. The boss was aware of how he was dealing with corruption in the city. Tail and Bo ordered to come up with a plan today. Otherwise, he would lose his head and, to intimidate, showed his shiny sword. The frightened genius with glasses was ready to tell his master about his plan, which said that he would need to agree to all the conditions. You just need to force the troops to be sent out of the capital first. And as for the promissory note, the continuation was said in secret from others, but Tail and Bo liked this idea, and Sai Vei gathered his army on a campaign. He gathered almost all the knights, ordering those who remained to guard the castle and its maids. As the column moved forward, Clement noticed that Hire was in the other direction. He asked the ruler where they were going, and the young man said that there were still not enough troops. First, they will go to Chengguang to get arrows there with the help of grass boats. The old man thought that the gentleman was out of his mind because what he received in response seemed nonsense to him. There was a group sitting on one of the towers. The guys played cards and discussed how well they managed to guard the fortress. They already imagined that as soon as the time was up, they could go to St. Zoe to receive a reward. Lin Fan heard the outrage about the negligent attitude towards orders. The player replied that it would be impossible to approach everything responsibly. Then the man asked how he would behave if he saw Lord Falcon. If this happened, he would turn into a tiger. Recognizing this voice, Lin Fan turned around and saw a ruler in front of him, asking when the promised transformation would happen. The whole company was horrified. It was so calm without him, but with the appearance of the young lord, things got worse. They began to look for a way to escape. 
but when they looked down, they saw that the castle was cordoned off by the Lord's army. It was like taking over a city. The events taking place around the castle reached Saint Zoe and Ye Hao. They hastened to check their sensations. The goddess had a presentiment that her people were going to war again to shed their innocent blood. She could only pray for them in the hope that God would hear her. Ye Hao was very close. He was angry with the ruler because at their last meeting the player did not follow the Lord, so why now did he come to him? Sive stood imperiously in the midst of the evil Torin. He expected that his provocation would attract the child of destiny, who would surely appear soon to protect his people. The ruler's army was numerous and armed. This is the most powerful army in the entire empire. The young ruler understood that time was passing, but the leaders of the Inhuman clan were still missing. Well, what kind of disrespect to him? Approaching the players, Sive ordered them to mentally call the goddess, or at least Ye Hao here, because they were of no use. The main square of the city was lively. Many subhumans crowded around the window that led to the negotiation room. There, sitting at the table, celebrities of their time were talking. The young master wanted to win St. Zoe over to his side. He invited the subhumans to join in the battle against the orcs who want to capture Haya. Ye Hao stood aside nervously. Sive confidently said that after defeating the enemy, he would leave their clan alone. The goddess resisted as best she could. She constantly raised her voice at the ruler, and every now and then she was indignant that the poor subhumans were always used as bait. The young man's patience was running out. Tired of begging, he approached her and said that his orders were non-negotiable. He was interested to hear the nun's conditions. If they refuse, everyone will die. Hearing this, the saint immediately imagined that everything she had been striving for for so long would be resolved. The young master reminded that the territory of the city has long been no longer the land of subhumans. However, she recalled that every living creature should have a home and family. This is exactly what she asks. And for such a powerful ruler, this is nothing at all. The Lord just spread his hands. He made the argument that her state has not existed for a long time and the guy is not eager to become a sponsor in order to arrange a life for non-humans. The young man insisted that the nun sacrifice her innocence for the sake of the quiet life of all these zombies whom she protects. In addition, she will become the head of the city. Once the Sive touches the Holy Zoe, his task is completed. Ye Hao attacked the guy. He considered it arrogance that he approached the goddess with his advances. But the young ruler got ahead of him. He put his hand in the direction of the player and he, in turn, not having time to stop in time, flew at breakneck speed. The force of the blow threw him against the wall. After checking to see if his arm was okay, Sive thought that he had forgotten how he was not strong enough to compete with his abilities. Or do you just miss slaps? Having caught all five fingers on his cheek, Ye Hao lay unconscious in the corner of the room. Now all the other players came to the goddess's defense, but the Lord was no longer going to get his hands dirty. He again recalled the reason for his visit and clarified that the governance of the city was at stake. Otherwise, his army will take the city by force. The gentleman gave ten minutes to think and went out into the fresh air. Right at the door, a dirty sock falls out of the Saive's pocket. Surprised players look at the smelly object, saying that the Lord of the Empire is definitely a pervert. It was the same made stocking that had been stolen earlier. Coming out to the square, the guy notices that he has lost his stocking. He decides not to show it, and if suddenly, then under no circumstances will he admit it. Without having time to forget the dissatisfied faces of the players from the meeting room, a familiar character stood in front of Sive again. The guy with the woman's pigtails ordered the Lord to stop immediately. He said that the goddess accepted the terms and asked the ruler to take an oath that he would never take the city by force. At the request of the system, the young master learned that the guy with pigtails is Avatar. He's just starting to gain experience, but for now his strength is a level 1 mage. And with the ability of basic elemental magic, he received equipment, an ordinary robe and an ordinary wooden staff. C. Vey wanted to quickly finish the persuasion so that he could hit the road, and although the guy is an unbeliever, he still prepared to take an oath. The Lord swore on the honor of the knight that if all his strength was exerted in the battle, he promised to hand over the city of Chengguang to the clan of subhumans.
But Avatar had heard that the ruler is first of all a lord, secondly a count, thirdly a knight. That's why he said that the oath was not suitable. But Saive seemed to mock him. He outplayed everything, saying that he would defend the knightly honour at the cost of his life. And what the player heard, he misunderstood. Without hearing the oath to the end, the nun leaves the castle. She asks the heroic spirits to follow their hearts. The saint knows that for the sake of subhumans, they are ready to do anything. Telling this, the girl reminded that no one forces them to fight. She admitted that she was tired of watching players constantly put themselves in danger. The heroic spirits were touched by both such sweet care of their patroness and the oath of the pervert lord. But most of all, they were looking forward to this battle, and Yehau spoke out against joining. The player recalled that it was he who called them all to fight against the dishonest ruler. Moreover, after death in battle, they will be reborn, but will become weak. Satisfied, Sive approached the nun, who was afraid of intimacy with the guy, and began to whisper that she was managing the city much better, hinting that Destiny's child is simply taking up space. The main player tried to say something in response to the ruler, but his cheek hurt wildly. The young master took the goddess by the gentle chin and promised to return to battle alive, if only she would not worry about him. Spring blossomed in the nun's soul, but she quickly came to her senses and began to beat her seducer. And the system sent new instructions to all players, but the reward was not listed there. The heroic spirits kept wondering how the Lord managed to send electronic instructions to everyone. And their young ruler, sitting on a horse, prepared everyone for a bloody battle. Higher Fortress greeted its saviors with silence. It seemed that nothing and no one was disturbing the city. Seeing the army and the ruler, the chief and his servant Doug began to very joyfully greet their saviours. They alternately clapped their hands and extended their arms for hugs. Stretching out his hand, Talon Bo hurried to greet the Lord. However, the young man was not used to such handshakes and instead of a hand, he threw the reins from his warhorse. Sai Vei has already started to put the harrow in place. The young man had a presentiment that these antics of the city chief were just flowers, but soon he would cut off even the berries at the root. Talon Bo silently swallowed this disrespect from the ruler. He was pleased with the thought of the brilliant plan that Doug came up with. Meanwhile, the Lord, sitting in a soft velvet chair, asked the mayor of the city to quickly bring him up to date with all the problems. After this, the chief called the commander-in-chief, who spread a map of the empire in front of the ruler. On the map, he showed which territories the orcs managed to destroy. The enemies, with an army of 6,000 souls, were seen near the village of Carter, which is three miles from the city, some of them riding wolves. And all negotiations with them were unsuccessful. The young lord asked if there were any villages near the sea that had not yet been touched by the enemy. And the knight was pleased to name three villages, Stray Dogs, Luther and Iron Ore. The latter was just suitable for attacking the orcs, and Sive began to more carefully study the terrain and terrain near it. The village of Iron Ore captivated with its landscapes, and in the depths of its lands and mountains it hid numerous tons of natural resources and lost treasures. On both sides of the fast river there are armies of different views on life. Even water will not be a hindrance when it comes to conquering territory. An overgrown cat burst into the tent of the chief above the orcs. He shouted that people in armour were moving here. His boss almost choked on a piece of ham. He didn't understand how they knew that they were hiding here. And on the opposite bank, having taken a convenient place, Sive watched as their enemy panicked at the thought that their location had been revealed. The Baron did not think that the young master was so ahead of the curve. He was wondering how the guy knew that the orcs were here. He instructed Clement to explain his tactics. The old man happily explained to Talon Bo that the village is closest to Haya, and besides, there are many vital resources near the river. After all, everything is logical because the river is a source of water and food. Analyzing the direction of the capture of villages, one can easily guess that their path will one way or another pass through the village of Jeleznaya Ruda. Both looked at each other, realizing that there were quite a few orcs, but most of them played the role of cannon fodder. They won't be able to withstand even one blow. On the other side, they had already begun to line up along the shore. The main obstacle to victory was the infantry and 60 horsemen. Sive waited for the leader of the orcs. He was riding a wolf. It was Bloodfang. 
he was willing to give mercy if the army of men surrendered. However, his words reached the ruler in an indistinct mumble, but he understood the intonation well. The manager, Doug, said that he could translate the phrases of the orc cavalrymen, but the Lord refused because he decided to respond by shooting an arrow at the negotiator. Squinting his eye, he pulled the bowstring as far as he could to disperse the sharp beam as strongly as possible. The hopeful orc leader thought he had made an impression with his entrance. He did not expect that he would become an easy target and would not be able to continue participating in the battle. The arrow hit the orc directly in the head. The halberd flew in one direction, the shield in the other, and the deceased Bloody Fang in the third. Having fallen at the feet of his army, the corpse of the leader froze with his mouth open. There was an arrow stuck in his head, and the green grass began to turn scarlet. He was motionless, and this meant that the cavalryman was dead. They lost a good warrior. Their task now became revenge for their ally who died in an unfair battle. The orcs raised their weapons to silently show the rest of the army that it was time to attack. The forces were not equal, but the human army had many modern weapons and magical abilities. There were four orcs for every Sivay warrior. The outcome of the battle can be the most unpredictable. When the enemies were left without their leader, they rushed into battle without looking back. They looked as if they had taken a dose of adrenaline or had rabies. Not a muscle moved on Sivay's face. The young ruler commanded his army confidently and harmoniously. The distance was rapidly closing. There will be the greatest battle in this game. The Baron spoiled the serious mood. Tail and Bow kept wiping his sweating bald head. Sometimes you could hear him whispering in fear that the orcs were approaching. The next step in the ruler's plan was to order the archers to get ready to shoot. Everything went according to plan, and it was a sin to complain about your commander-in-chief. Sai Vei then gave orders to the heroic warriors. Having waited their turn, the powerful spirits began to warm up their abilities. Both armies expect victory. They simultaneously rush at each other. It is in the blood of every warrior to fight until his last breath. At the moment of the clash, their hearts were beating wildly, and then there was confusion. Is it a good time and place to fight? Who will decide to surrender first, an orc or a knight? Should enemies be left alive? The orcs stuck to their previously conceived plan. In theory, their first lines of troops should have weakened the archers. Then the main rabid beasts would have emerged. The heroic spirits advanced, taking the lives of more and more invaders. They served the ruler very loyally after he vowed to help them free the subhumans. As in any battle, there were losses on both sides. The orcs were much more ruthless and bloodthirsty than the human army. Watching the knights succumb to the invaders, Sivay orders Tail and Bow to lead the cavalry and follow him to replace the heroic spirits. Clement is assigned to him to keep an eye on him. If the Baron decides to pull some trick, the punishment will be very cruel. The bald man has no choice but to accept the order without discussion. Raising his greatsword, the brave lord led his army. All knights were to target the enemy camp and attack it when ordered. The ruler warned that once they killed the line of shield bearers, there was a possibility of being ambushed. After this, a new wave of battle begins. Cutting down every orc that stands in the guy's way, he slowly moves closer and closer to the center of the enemy. The young man does not spray himself on everyone, giving the opportunity to feel the taste of battle for each of his knights. Sivay felt someone else's gaze on him. It was Baden who assessed the ruler. Baden Bloodfang was the commander of the 18th Blood Boiling Squad. He had the strength of a level 42 tribe leader. Fury, Contrition and the family of beasts were available to him. The equipment available was armour and a mace. It was clear from his popularity that he was the main danger to the residents of Haiha. This is exactly what Saive was looking for, because there was no one else more suitable in strength. The young man met the tribe leader's blow and threw it away, after which he asked how he felt. Baden did not accept the young master's joke. He admitted that the ruler is strong, but his army is exhausted and the situation will soon change. The leader tried to scare him by saying that this was not the whole army that he saw. The beast said that people would not be able to defeat them. Without wasting any time, Baden pulls out his secret weapon, a white spray can with a gold ornament in the shape of fangs. It looked like a bottle of perfume. Sivay was familiar with this attribute. 
the Lord began to understand that the animal would transform. Now he had to think about how to protect people, because they are the ones he wants to hurt. The young man tried to use his ability, the famous barrier, but the enemy's mutation had already begun, which means nothing could stop him from completing this process. A 20-meter monster grew in front of the guy. His muzzle resembled a dragon, his body was hairy, like a mammoth, his fangs grew like a walrus, and his tongue was long, like a lizard. The ruler's army learned that Beeman himself was on the side of the enemy. Local residents were told terrible things about him. And now they will have to experience all the invincible power of this creature. The monster felt people's fear and grabbed each knight like a tin soldier. His strength was level 36 and he had no equipment. And his abilities were no different from an ordinary beast. He snacked on people. It was a real devil who had muzzles all over his head. But he was not the only one. Several orcs who stood nearby also mutated into Beeman. The ruler's guards noticed that some had seven heads. They suggested that Survey leave quickly, but the young man told them not to panic ahead of time. Listening to himself, the Lord began to lose the desire to win. He noticed that if you do not want this, then the knight becomes weak. The guy makes a decision to get out of this bathhouse. Continuing to strike with his sword, Sive orders the survivors to leave the encirclement. He tells the army of people to get out of here while they still have strength. The knights tried to convince the ruler that they were not ready to retreat without him. Sai Vei was firm in his decision. He told the guards that while they were running, he would hold off all the beemen. Moreover, Clement will be nearby soon. The players also did not want to follow the Lord's orders. After all, they are the ones who must cover their commander-in-chief and they are asked to flee from the battlefield. To replace the tired warriors, ten Torin hurried through the dense forest. They were full of strength and did not tolerate mercy over the enemy. Each already felt an irresistible desire to kill. Coming out of the forest, they were already approaching the place where their help was most needed. Seeing that the situation is under control, they begin to wave their weapons. The first collisions occur. Everything is going smoothly. Bane Bloodhoof does not stop setting up his clan only for victory. He tries to raise the morale of his brothers. The heroic spirits heard the ground shaking under their feet. They couldn't understand what was happening. Maybe it's their death that is approaching so noisily. The players learned that this was the Bloodhoof clan. They were really looking forward to them, and now the forces were equal, which means that victory will soon be on the side of the ruler. Seeing that the Tauren were on the side of the people, the chief orc ordered Wolf to find out why the animals were not on their side. He ordered to go and quietly carry out his order. But he didn't respond. He could no longer call him because Wolf was dead. He lay motionless on the ground, bleeding. And now the leader of the orc army faces the same fate. Clement stood behind the beast. He was preparing the invader that it would be the end of him too. The old man grabbed the orc's hair to make it easier to cut his throat. The survivors of that difficult battle were greeted with loud shouts and applause. Residents of the city thanked and paid tribute to the young lord and his army. Tired but happy, Sive rejoiced with the locals because his popularity in the empire was only growing. He will always be welcome in the city of Haya. The chief of the city hurried to the ruler. He wrote a receipt that within a year he would be able to collect the required amount, equipment and food. The baron also wanted to get the leader of the orcs to execute publicly in the square. Having accepted the document, Sive agreed to give the leader of the invaders to the baron and agreed to accept 5,000 gold, 200 weapons and some food, which Talon Bo offered him to begin with. The young master was asked to stay for the feast dedicated to the victory, but he refused. The Lord ordered an advance payment to be made in order to safely return to the capital. Shackled hand and foot, Baden Bloodfang sat in a cold dungeon. He was thinking about how he could take revenge for the shameful defeat and interrupting his thoughts, he notices the figures of people. Talon Bo and Manager Doug stood near the bars where the prisoner was sitting. In his hands, the Baron held the Scroll of Earthquakes, which can only be activated by the leader of the Orcs. It turned out that the father of the city chief, who had previously killed the Orc leader, gave the scroll to his son for safekeeping. But the bald man completely forgot about it. But now this piece of paper did not seem useless. Surprised by this proposal, Baden was about to take revenge on the ruler, but Talon Bo said that if he loses again, he will have to give up 10,000 gold. 
The mayor explained that the scroll of earthquakes would save the life of the leader in any case, whether he wins or loses. And for the service, the boss promised to grant him life. Baden agreed. He was glad to kill the Lord and his army using such a weapon. But after everything was done, the prisoner wanted to be buried on the battlefield. That's what they agreed on. To activate the scroll, a drop of blood and a few words in the Orcish language were required. The villain taught the Baron a magic spell and was released. When the beginning of revenge was laid, Tail and Bow emerged from the dungeon as a completely different person. He felt as if he had conquered the whole world. Now, he will certainly kill the young ruler. He was standing on the balcony of his palace when he said that the ruler would die today. Because of this news, C. Vey and the knights decided to linger. The young man didn't understand at first because it all seemed like a joke. Tail and Bow showed them the earthquake scroll, and by casting a spell he would be able to unseal it. The fact that the Lord was destined to die, according to the bald man, was the greed of the ruler. These words sounded like a challenge to the young master. He quickly replayed the Baron's threats, but still did not understand what greed was. He saw nothing dangerous in his screams. When the measure realized that his words were not taken seriously, he decided to take action. Previously, he wanted to give the Lord the opportunity to beg for mercy, but now he did not consider this option. Seve only showed a gesture that meant it was time to stop this circus. He warned against any tricks. The Baron didn't even have time to understand anything when blood began to flow from his thick belly. The chief turned to look his death in the eyes and saw his cavalry commander-in-chief. It turned out that he has been guarding the scroll of earthquakes since ancient times. The closest knight turned out to be a faithful servant of the Golden Lion family. The last words Baron Tail and Bow spoke were that he was loyal to his country. Leaving the scene of the massacre, he thought that if there had not been an attempt on the master's life, then everyone would have been alive. Sitting in a chair, Sive greeted that same faithful knight. It turned out to be Alan, it was not a secret, because even when they were choosing a suitable village, the Lord recognized him. He took off his helmet to tell his master that he had saved his life. The Lord replied that he then recognized him by his voice. Next, he wanted to know how he ended up in Haya. He was sent to the city as an eminence grease, but Sive's father knew that death could await his son here, so he decided to play it safe. The king is already old and gives all orders in a hurry so as not to miss anything. He was grateful to his father and Alan as well. The young man did not allow the thought that the Duke of Manhattan was not in a conspiracy against him and the subhumans. After talking about the victims of the dungeon and the flask, the young lord thought that the blood of subhuman girls helps in training holy knights. After hearing this, the cardinal hastened to intervene, and at the end of this pleasant meeting, C. Vey promises to present Biden's head on behalf of Alan to the king. He thought that for this, he would give the entire hire to the faithful knight as a reward. As is customary, the Lord was going to take all the coins of the unfaithful baron. Entering the treasury, both became noticeably more cheerful. They had no idea how rich they would become in the next minute. The young lord simply lost his mind from so many coins and valuables. Then he remembered the deceased and how he pretended to be a beggar. Clement remained completely calm at this time. When the chariots were loaded with money, the army set off back to the capital. The squad moved slowly so as not to lose anything in the pits. The players watched the passing carts and realized with envy how poor they felt. Some had the idea to steal one gold piece because no one would notice it was missing anyway. Riding his horse, Sai Vey sent a request to the system. Where is his reward? Having completed all the daily tasks, he was eager to find out what he would get in the lottery. Added to the young master's abilities was Breath of the Wild, which contained several types of wild nature aura. The Lord wanted to know how this artifact would be useful. Beings that are pure in soul can awaken this power in different manifestations depending on their talents. Having heard that he himself did not fit under the influence of the new reward, he thought, why then did he need it at all, if he still could not feel this power? And then the program began to list those who fall into this category. For example, the ruler's horse. Out of surprise, the Lord even spurred his stallion. 
the guy could not understand what the pure soul of this animal was and how to determine to whom this gift was extended, the young man began to understand that the problem is in wild nature itself, because with the help of a special item, you can give animals a chance to develop and subsequently use them for personal gain. But this only affected the ruler's horse. The rest of the animals were ordinary because the range of breath of the wild was limited. But there was also a reason for innate talent. At the residence of Chengguan City, documents were signed to transfer the city to subhumans. Si Vei was sitting at the table, and opposite was the goddess Zoe, who had changed her image. Around them stood the players who wanted to witness the process itself. The future manager was very serious and decided to start without any introductory conversations. The young man handed over the contract so that the other party could read it before signing. Suddenly, some kind of force began to appear above the table. He had never met such spirits before. And as it turned out, the goddess of order also wanted to be a witness to the transfer of the city. The spirit of an elf girl in a revealing outfit and blindfolded greatly impressed the young man. Saint Zoe felt strange sensations, as if butterflies were fluttering in her stomach, she could not sit still. I have never noticed such a desire in myself. She was drawn to the Lord, an incredible aura emanated from him and under the influence of her feelings, she rushed across the table, straight into the arms of the Lord. It looked strange. They wanted a kiss, but the players got in the way. They quickly reacted and immediately rushed to separate these loving vices, trying to bring their mistress to her senses. Returning her to her place, Avatar asked why she did this. The girl felt ashamed of her desires and thoughts towards the young ruler. She tried to apologize. To distract her from the vulgar actions, the guy with pigtails shows the ruler's contract so that she can familiarize herself with it. But hearing the master's name again, she trembled. The still wet goddess re-read aloud what was written. She didn't understand anything, but hoped that the players would be able to remember and object if the conditions were not the same. Everything was correct, but Avatar asked if there were any PS in the contract and everything is transparent? Sive reassured him and said that everything was fair, written correctly and clearly. However, it stated that the city was transferred on behalf of the deceased Mengil for an indefinite period to St. Zoe. Something was alarming, but the fact that the goddess of order was protecting him calmed him down. If so, then there should be no problems. Having signed, she thought that God's punishment would still follow for deception. As soon as the saint signed her autograph, the goddess of order appeared above the table again. She was calm and returned to activate this contract. Si Vei was the first to congratulate Saint Zoe on her new position. His words were sincere towards the new city manager. The young man was impatient to stipulate some conditions. The girl and avatar were glowing with happiness. This desire to return the city to its former inhabitants cost shed blood. Finally, all subhumans will be able to live in peace. And the Lord continued his speech. He wanted to know when the city would pay the tax, since Changguan was part of the Falcon Empire and not a separate territory. Zoe began to argue why pay taxes if the city is under her control. However, the Lord said that no one is exempt from this and the goddess of order will not punish for this. The ruler, ready for this, told her that the previous boss also received the city on these conditions and she just took over on the same terms. Her eyes were full of tears, but she held on so as not to burst into tears. I hope for the best she fell into a trap. The players began to whisper that the ruler had managed to deceive them. It turns out that Ye Hao decides, he said that Si Vei is not worthy of the title of Lord of the District for such a vile and immoral act. The child of destiny wants to fight the ruler again and the young gentleman was not at all in the mood for a serious conversation with the appeared character. He resorts to insults and calls him an annoying mosquito. Humiliated in front of everyone, the hero challenges the Lord to a duel. Provided that if the ruler loses, then taxes are cancelled for the city forever. Sai Vei will agree to this if Ye Hao does not use his powers to increase strength. The player guessed that he would ask him about this and called the ruler a coward. It's time for daily missions. 1. Beat up the child of destiny yourself. 2. Make a saint cry. 3. Forcefully kiss the goddess. Two tasks were related to Zoe, and Sai Vei could only guess why this was so. Maybe this is a personal counterattack against the girl? 
he mentally wished for more such perverted missions. Inspired by the upcoming fight, the Lord returned to his conversation with the city manager. The guy wanted to know what reward they were willing to give if they lost the battle. They were not ready for this and uncertainty took possession of them. Ye Hao hastened to answer that if the Lord's desire does not go beyond what is permitted, then he is ready for anything. However, consent alone was not enough for the ruler. He turned his gaze to the goddess and completed his demands. He wanted only one thing, to get the holy Zoe. The Lord decided to check if it would work. He was almost attacked right in the presence of witnesses. Realizing that the option didn't work, the young man offers only five minutes with the goddess if he wins. Ye Hao was still against it. He couldn't allow the defender of subhumans to be left alone with such an insolent and deceiver. Zoe stopped the quarrel between the young men. She believed in the victory of her ally and asked to agree to a short date in case of loss. The training ground is full of people. An exciting battle between popular players has already begun. The rivals met with swords and each tried to throw back the enemy as much as possible. So far, the ruler has managed to withstand the blow. He gets a small victory when he manages to push Ye Hao. In battle, one cannot do without the master's jokes. He said that the young man ate little porridge. The child of destiny manages to stay on his feet. He doesn't understand the Lord's humor, and hearing the mockery only makes him want to kill him more and more. Having waited for him to turn around to gather the applause of his fans, the defender of the subhumans decides that while he gets his dagger, he begins his attack. The Lord dodges, guessing where the throw will come from. He notices that the cutlass is poisoned and again calls his opponent names. However, he responds by saying that in war, all means are good. Wielding a legendary level sword, he decides it's time for the illustrious barrier and sends a precise water strike at his opponent. The player manages to pull away. Luckily, he had been practicing these skills lately. He decides not to give in to the young master and is going to hit him with a blow from the same series. Now, a brilliant strike is approaching the ruler. Upgraded version, but he could not move. He was poisoned by the vapors of the poison on Yahao's dagger. And now he was afraid to even let go of his sword. Clement stood among the support group. He understood that this was a deadly move, and if you hit his beam, you would die. The old man did not understand why his master froze. The servant is about to intervene in the duel, but Avatar stops him. This is a duel, which means no one has the right to interfere. Circling the same words in a circle in his head, that he was the luminary of this empire, the legendary student of the Blade Master. Everything seemed like a spell. Pictures from the past. When something didn't work out for him, the Lord remembered the teacher's words that he needed to clear his head so that his body and mind worked together. As a child, he constantly cried and complained in order to get the help he wanted faster. But the Blade Master was in no hurry to help him. He said the same words, open your eyes and try again. Knowing that it will definitely work, but he needs it to work on the first try because he doesn't have time. And then, Sive opened his eyes and tried again to move. He manages to raise his two-handed sword of the glorious lion high above him. And there was enough time to throw a decent defense to meet the attack. This duel was like a battle between two titans. The earth did not stop moving under the hero's feet, and the reflections of their blows glowed in the sky. Somewhere at a safe distance, the saint asked the goddess of wild nature for help, so that brother Ye Hao would remain alive. She begged for him to return safe and sound. But her words did not reach the participants in the battle. They were focused on their strength and thinking about their next strike. So Vey began to spit blood, this poison was leaving the ruler's body. But it was necessary to continue the fight because the opponent did not want to give up. Eyewitnesses to this fight watched in horror as something happened to the Lord. Will the strong young master really lose? But on the other side, things were even worse. The water hammer is about to touch Ye Hao. The young man trembled all over and the warrior spirit held him. His legs did not want to obey at all. He didn't want to die, but he couldn't escape. Then he closed his eyes and did what he least wanted to do. In front of everyone, Ye Hao admitted defeat and fell to his knees in front of the young master. By this, he showed that he lost the battle and lost a lot of authority among other players. Goddess Zoe rushed to support her brother, but the Lord intercepted her. He said it was time to keep what he promised. Seeing this, the players began to defend their manager, calling the Lord a villain. 
They said that he would not dare to offend the girl and would only get her through their corpses. Sauvé thought of teaching the naughty heroic spirits a lesson. He couldn't stand being blackmailed. But the salvation from becoming a murderer was Saint Zoe. The girl agreed to the agreement and said that there was no need to kill anyone. The Lord lifted her from his knees because he did not expect this from her. And he calmed everyone down, saying that he just wanted to talk in private. Having pressed her against the wall, the ruler forgot about all the agreements. She couldn't hold back her tears because he was going to talk to her. But he deceived her again. And so she stood, burning with shame and fear, because she could not predict what the dishonest ruler of the empire was planning. A huge number of short kisses fell on the manager. She didn't want to be defamed, and C. Vey was pursuing other interests. He couldn't wait to hear the notification about the completed task. He tried in every possible way to scare his victim that all subhumans would die if she did not cooperate with him. The victim begged not to touch her people. So the counterattack worked. She congratulated the owner for completing the mission. Realizing that she values her clan greatly, why didn't he take advantage of it earlier? Having gotten what he wanted, the Lord said that time was up and it was time for him to go. Having freed her hands, the ruler heard that she wanted to continue. She again felt the pleasant aura of the young man as she did then at the table. But now no one could stop them, and the goddess hugged the Lord to kiss him. She said she wouldn't let him go anywhere. He didn't want her to kiss him at all, and he threatened her with new taxes if she didn't stop the harassment. Soon she cooled down and her sympathy subsided. Then the goddess again felt shame for her action. She wanted to fall through the ground. Okay. The first time she was forgiven for such terrible behavior, but the second time it was already beyond the bounds of decency. Having recovered from the shock, the goddess saw that she was alone in the castle, and the Lord continued to terrorize the system with all his might. He asked where his rewards for completing villainous missions were. She had to spin the lottery wheel. As a result, the ruler receives the Cat Mogan Dragon Blood Potion. As he examines his only prize for the day, he learns that it is a strengthening liquid created by pharmacist Cat Mogan. Thinking that there are no such people on the continent, Sive realizes how unique this blood is. The system never gave him useless artifacts. Next, the program asked you to quickly drink the dragon potion in order to restore yourself and your strength after the fight with Ye Hao. He himself couldn't wait to try and experience new sensations of lightness. He drank the bottle and felt his body filled with power, as if you were being born again. Having come to my senses after the update, new system functions became available. Sive began to listen to determine what the game rewarded him with. Ye Hao hurried to the palace. He was afraid that the Lord would do nothing to St. Zoe. The girl was not expecting him at all. He began to bother her, constantly hanging around. And in general, she considered him guilty that she had to be left alone with the ruler. The banished Ye Hao heard other players say that once the Lord left, she didn't want to see anyone. Then I heard that losing also had something to do with it. And finally, gossipers began to talk about the main character, claiming that he was not capable of anything and was not going to fight back. The angry young man quickly walked to his chambers, where he took out a small box from the table. He didn't want to use it at all, but Lord Falcon became the culprit of all his failures. And in the box, there was a skeleton of a man with a goat's head. There were devilish wings behind her, and she herself emitted a blood-red light. Now the hero will receive points for tasks, and the system itself will decide how many points to count for completed villainous missions. Points are needed to purchase artifacts and abilities. Then the villainous store appeared on the screen, where the guy had to shop. At that moment, he thought that now he could have everything he had long dreamed of, but the system did not give it. After looking at the store's price list, he noticed that the sign Limited often appeared, which didn't make him particularly happy. After all, it is now available for purchase, but when it is needed, it may not be available. Sai Vei planned to buy the Heavenly Night Breakthrough Potion for Clement and also sent a lot of things to the favorite goods that would strengthen the combat power of his army. They were on the road for three days when they finally returned to their native Sokol. The Lord loved his home although he also felt comfortable visiting. His two main girls at the moment came out to meet the ruler's army. The young ruler couldn't wait to stroke his furry little maid. It turns out that Laurie was waiting for him at the gate every day after classes with Chris, 
and despite all the persuasion, she remained standing at the entrance to the palace. He didn't expect the little maid to miss him so much. After this, the nanny said that the gentleman was tired from the road. So bath and dinner are already ready. Everyone went inside. Once in his chambers, Sivay thought it would be nice to relax, but Laurie had slightly different plans. Instead of collapsing into a warm, soft bed, he would have to comfort his maid, who began to admit how much she missed her ruler. The Lord wanted to take a bath first, after a long hike. Only then was he ready to hug and listen to the girl, even until the morning. But she did not let him go, but rather pressed him even more tightly to her. She said that the owner smelled very tasty, warm, and she had been waiting for him for so long to hug him. He was pleased to hear this, when suddenly the guy remembered about the special item. Creatures that are pure in soul can awaken the breath of the wild. Maybe Laurie is feeling this right now? The Lord decides it would be appropriate to ask her something about inhumans with powers? As she began to tell that in childhood, her father said that they were a very powerful race. Although subhumans do not have magical talents, they are able to awaken the hidden power of blood naturally. However, there are conditions that, in addition to talent, you need to be able to manage and select this gift correctly. For example, the power of water flow can be summoned if it is near a waterfall, and the power of the wild beast will awaken if it is in the company of a pack of wild animals. Laurie had no idea what kind of talent was hidden in her body, but she knew for sure that few achieve success. The young master realized that by helping subhumans with his ability to find his gift, he could hope for their help in the future. The young man asked if she remembered how her people comprehended nature. Surprised by such interest in this topic, the maid said that she remembered everything and even felt some kind of response within herself. But she abandoned this hobby thinking that she simply did not have talent. He asks to try again. Maybe she will be able to listen to her inner voice, which will guide her along the right path. He took her hand, and at that moment, a golden glow began to appear. Careful not to scare, Saive hugs Laurie. They both close their eyes. There was silence in the room, which really helped to tune in. She concentrated, and after a few minutes moved to the prairies full of vital energy. It was worth a try, and I found out what kind of talent he has. Saive rejoiced, he felt that the maid had the ability to restore vitality. This is the power of Lori. The young man dreamed that he now had a personal healer. Suddenly she fell asleep, saying that she was very tired. This journey, with the help of Breath of the Wild, was energy-consuming. The Lord put her to his bed. Falling asleep, the maid grabbed the young man's pants. Thinking what a good help his maid had become, he tried to get his pants from the girl's hands. But she grabbed onto them so tightly that even with all her strength, she couldn't free herself. Thinking that there was no point in disturbing her, he prepared to take off his pants. What's wrong with this? He's in his chambers, she's fast asleep, and in general he is the ruler and everything is allowed to him. Well, what kind of luck? As soon as he thought, goodbye immediately entered the door. This servant loves to appear at the right time. He found the ruler with his pants down next to the sleeping lorry. Sitting down at his desk, Sivay could not understand why the commander allowed himself to enter without knocking. The Lord was impatient to find out the true reason for his visit. Before moving on to the news, Goodbye reminded that the master is a great man and a couple of fetishes are not a problem. But the guy decided to leave these perverted guesses of the guard commander. The knight held a card in his hands. And the news is that not far from the border of their empire and the Butan Empire, they found a deposit of a spring with copper ore. When Goodbye showed the exact location of the fossil deposits, it turned out that it was closer to neighbouring territories. And the Count can't wait to get his hands on the mine. But the ruler can do anything. He took his pen and, in front of the amazed commander's eyes, began to change the border of the empire, shifting it so that the desired place became closer to the falcon. Goodbye was ready for war. He promised to go out onto the battlefield and fight bravely. And the Lord stopped the knight and asked him not to rush. For now, we need to send the new boarders to Count Buton. Sivay also extended the guard's sock washing time for a year. 
While taking a bath, the young man thought how much his body had become stronger under the influence of the dragon potion he had drunk. After all, ordinary weapons that are not filled with combat energy cannot harm him. I became narcissistic and displayed my biography on the touchscreen. He was glad that he had reached strength, heavenly knight, then moved on to abilities and then to his beloved reputation. From the entire list, he was interested that from the Orc Empire, Laden Bloodfang still swears that he will conquer the entire Falcon Territory. Maybe he wants to bring his friends and conquer the Empire? The young ruler was looking for adventure for himself. Now all his thoughts were occupied with what kind of family connection there was between the new enemy and Baden. I also decided that the borders needed to be strengthened. After finishing his bath, the Lord began to think like an invader. He was sure that the orcs would go through the Sorrento Mountains, which meant that the city of Hire would also be under attack. Fight for this territory again? Returning to Saive's chambers, he meets Lori. She woke up and now wants to thank the young man because he helped awaken the power in his blood. She offers to give birth to a child for the ruler. The young master asked if she knew what to do for this, and the maid told how her nanny taught her all the details of adult life. As he thought, the experienced Chris guessed that the guy liked his personal maid, and she decided to speed up their rapprochement by teaching them not only good things. The Lord refused. He said that she still needed to grow up. Laurie began to argue, but Saive ordered her to rest and save strength because she had just awakened her natural gift and had not yet fully recovered her vitality. She had to agree with this. Recently, meetings have been taking place frequently at Lord Herman's residence. Significant people for the Butan Empire are accustomed to discussing all the latest news with the company. For several meetings in a row, the topic concerns the ore deposit, it is still a draw, but two strong empires lay claim to the mine. And that's all because it is located on the border of the territory of Cologne and Butan. Lord Herman, an elderly man who never parted with his pince-nez, worked proactively. He sent the right people, who estimated the reserves at 8 million tons. Seeing that the knights became very animated at the thought of such riches, he started shouting. The Count shouted that the ruler of the city, Sokol, wanted to take away the mine with treasures from them. Revealing that the site legally belongs to the Butan Empire, Hermann shows a map on which Lord Sive changed the boundaries, thereby dividing the location of the minerals. Having a small territory and army, the Lord is going to prevent the ruler of the Cologne Empire from accomplishing his plan. He will not allow anyone to mock him and will boldly accept the challenge to war. Then the Count began to introduce those present to the enemies. As soon as I finished the biography of Sive, I moved on to Clement, who posed the greatest threat to them. Anticipating a battle, Count Hermann exercised his right to remove one-third of the minerals from the mine, and he asked for the rental of three Earth Knights, who were already on their way. Moreover, he asked his son to show what level the concentration of combat power had reached. His son, Jet, was an Earth Knight at 21. Admiring meeting participants rushed to congratulate the Count assuring everyone that with the help of his heir, they would be able to win additional territory with a mine, the Count also hoped to continue the development of the Empire's clan. Having gone out on horseback for a walk around the city, Sive was thinking about the new functions of the game. He was interested in the idea of how the system was going to award points, and could he deceive it? On the way, the Lord meets the same plump boy from whom he took the lollipop. The kid also recognised his offender. The child complained to the ruler that his mother was beaten. The young master was imbued with the child's condition. The Lord wanted to know why his mother suffered. It turned out that he was an orphan. His father was killed in the war. The family was paid a cash benefit, which bad people found out about. At one point, they came to rob them, and my mother did not want to give them the money. Saive asked why his mother didn't come to see him and tell him about what happened to which the plump guy replied that the Lord would not punish his knight. The ruler followed to the house where the attack took place. Now, the little orphan did not know how to get out of this situation. He said that mom was fine and they were very grateful for the benefits. The house of the child and his mother was located in a poor area of the city, but despite this, it looked neat and well-groomed. When the chubby guy entered it, he became cheerful. He told his mother the good news that he was back. He also brought with him Lord Falcon, 
who really wanted to visit the beaten woman. The boy carefully stroked the patient and carefully placed the medicine on the table. The woman wanted to get up to say hello. She was shaking all over. But Si Vei forbade her to rise. The young man began to ask her if she was sure of her words that the attackers were supported by knights. But the poor thing confirmed what was said. The woman talked about Bolt and his bandits. This gang lives somewhere in the outer city area. They live on stolen money and sometimes for protecting something or someone. The beaten woman remembered the day when the knight brought money and they attacked and took it away. Before leaving, the robbers said that they would only be glad if they began to take revenge because nothing will happen to them anyway, since the knights and the ruler himself are on their side. From what he heard, Sive was very angry. He never saw this bolt or all the other bandits. And how did they even have the courage to use his name in all their outrages? A visitor was sitting in one of the city's taverns, overlooking the main square. He was looking out the window and had a hood on his head. The waitress offered him something to drink. The secret visitor turned out to be a lord. He prepared the best that is in their establishment. Having paid in advance, he continued to peer at the passers-by on the street. The girl called herself Vane. The polite waitress asked to call her if he still needed to order something. The square was quite lively. The pumped-up guy walked with an important gait towards the tavern. He looked around like a proprietor, noting everyone who would become his prey. The dream of any men's magazine, Vane brought the generous visitor his order. The waitress carefully carried a mug of ale on a wooden tray. A strong wind rose in the room. The girl could barely hold her tray with a drink. Before reaching the place where her client was sitting, Vane saw that there was no one at the table. He couldn't find it anywhere because he had paid for his order. And in a dark corner, a strong hand was squeezing the throat of a beaten guy. The man who dragged him into the gateway demanded that he answer all the questions. Sive warned him that he would kill the bandit for deceiving him. The guy recognized the ruler and agreed to tell him anything. The Lord began the interrogation. He asked if he knew the Borncret family. The same cowardly villain admitted that it was he who robbed them and named several more families in the Vafan region. Now, Sive wanted to know who gave the order to take away benefits. He was ready to find out who the corrupt knight was who chose to take money from poor families. Hearing the name Gar, the ruler could not believe that the knight who swore to protect the people was causing such chaos in the empire. After all, he promised that he would follow the master. What made him go down the wrong path? The traitor had his own residence because he served for many years in the service of the ruler. And with the money he stole from poor families, he furnished his palace well. Having found the knight's chambers, the impatient lord knocked down the doors of his chambers. He wanted to look this swindler in the eyes. Gar had fun in bed with two girls. He was afraid of such a sharp invasion of his personal space. There was a lord at the entrance. He looked unfriendly. He asked the knight if he liked to play on two fronts. Instantly approaching Gar, he grabbed him by the throat and began to choke him. The ruler asked if he was involved in robbing families in their city. Now it became clear what the lord's visit was connected with. Losing oxygen, he tried to explain himself. Calling himself a great knight, he complained that he was receiving three gold coins and did not consider it fair. He even started screaming because he was tired of being in poverty. He did not consider their lives valuable because every month they come to the financial office and ask for five silver coins. With his plan, life went uphill. He began to allow himself a lot of things. Gar could not believe that for his countless services to the empire, he would be killed because of the commoners. The adamant Sive forbade the use of his status as a great knight, because inciting local bandits and breaking laws was the most flagrant violation. The Lord found an excuse for the traitor. He was simply jealous of the dead knights. After death, the Gar family will receive exactly the same payment. The bell struck 13 times. Everyone was in a hurry to attend the public execution. Local residents began to wonder who was unlucky this time. Tortured and hungry, with his hands tied and not looking like himself, Gar could barely move his legs. In front of everyone, he was led to the place of execution. There, his executioner and the Lord himself were already waiting for him. The ruler began to explain to those gathered that he needed to make the actions of my subordinate public. The great knight will be executed for robbing families, for offending the weak, and inciting hooligans. 
residents of the city began to whisper that this was simply incredible. They did not believe that the master would cut off the head of a knight who had served him for many years. Many did not understand such cruelty from the Lord. See, they heard all the opinions of the public and repeated so that everyone understood, even the title does not matter if unfair things happen in the territory of the falcon, which the ruler finds out about. The young man explained that it makes no difference whether they are militia, guards or knights. After all, those who promised and swore to protect the population do not rob them. Each such traitor should regret what he did. After these words, Gar laughed loudly. Until the last moment, he did not believe that the Lord would make him regret what he had done. But the ruler ordered the execution without even giving him the last word. When the knight's head flew to the ground, the system worked. She counted 2,000 villain points. After wishing the player to not stop and put more effort into becoming a great villain, Sive nearly fell next to the body of the executed knight. He didn't understand why, having solved such a serious crime and killed someone who was harming people, the program gave him villainous points? The young man wanted an explanation. Everything turned out to be very simple. The public was not imbued with the problem of victimized families. The people are shocked by the coldness of their ruler and ruthlessness towards his subordinates. And everyone who serves in the palace will be confused, not understanding what actions could lead them to public execution in the city square. Without letting go of the executioner, the young master asks his opinion about his actions. Deeply frightened by such a question, the knight cannot find the right words. He began to explain that an experienced knight died because of ordinary people. The executioner believed that this was the wrong solution to the problem. Moreover, it was not he alone who thought so but many guards. Clement was also on the list of people who care about the empire. He also believed that Gar did not deserve to die. Sitting at the table, Sive couldn't stop thinking about how exactly he should regret. After the execution of the knight, how much will the local residents lose trust? The image of Gar haunted the ruler. The spirit of the deceased insisted that people would see how ruthlessly the young man treated those who had been loyal to the Empire all their lives. Laurie knocked on the door. She was worried that the gentleman had not had dinner, and she took the trouble to bring him food directly to his personal chambers. The maid noticed that something was bothering him. Citing insomnia, he wanted to calm the girl down. But she could already skillfully understand when the gentleman was hiding something from her and when he was being honest. The maid wanted to help. Every day it became more and more difficult to keep secrets from her. He admitted that it was all because of the theft of benefits. With its purity, Laurie attracted the Lord, who held back his true feelings. Lord said he believes he did the right thing. After all, victims need to be remembered, and people like the Garnite need to be punished. He was interested in knowing the girl's opinion. Laurie said that her father told her that people are not born heroes. However, by putting on a helmet and armor, taking up a weapon and going against the enemy, such people deserve the title of hero. She concluded that if no one can stand up for the heroes and everyone harms them, then what will happen to the world? With the empire. The young man completely agrees with her words. For such a truth that suits the Lord, he decides to kiss her. He is very happy that he saved the girl from the rapists then. The ruler's words delighted the little maid. She thought it was a good time to remind again that the girl was ready to give birth to a child for the ruler. But the answer was a refusal. She's still growing up. Laurie had long considered herself an adult and didn't understand what the problem was. The Lord wanted to test the strength of her blood again tomorrow. Finding the right excuse, he walked her to the door. And he fell on the bed and began to blame the system, which pointed to the girl's poor health. It was such a good moment. To take his mind off the sad memories, he decided to see what he could buy in the online store with his glasses. Maybe something will attract his attention and become useful. Artifacts, stones, soap, and perfume. Everything is interesting and quite useful. Explosives are expensive. Moving to the next department, he became interested in underwear. The lace underwear made from ice silkworm threads looked beautiful. But then he came across a siege weapon. It costs 600 points. And then it dawned on him what to do next. In the negotiation room, the Lord raised the question that the reason for the war with Butin was the desire to obtain an iron ore deposit. 
But that was not all. It was not enough for the ruler. The young master not only wanted to appropriate the mine, but also take advantage of the opportunity to plunder their capital. It was clear from the faces of those present that this was a bad idea. Some had the courage to think that the ruler's lips had not dried. And why should they listen to him at all? For them, he was a boy who had never been to war. Clement tried to save the situation and the Lord's reputation, which was melting before our eyes. The servant explained that the territory of the Butong Empire was not so easy to conquer. There is no equipment for a siege, and even if there was one, it would not be possible to smuggle it into the territory of a neighbouring empire unnoticed. And they had a magic cannon. The young master promised that he would solve this problem. The old man didn't expect such an answer. He really wanted to unravel his master's secret. The Lord lifted the veil of secrecy. He said that he had an idea on how to make two assault ladders enter the city unnoticed. Then the young man moved on to the next topic. The ruler asked how many soldiers they needed to capture the city. After all, many people are depressed by the situation with the mine. They can easily be lured to your side. Clement did not let up because the city is quite large and even under such specified conditions, occupying it will be very problematic, even because the great knight was executed. But it was he who was responsible for recruiting troops and purchasing horses. And now the empire does not have enough recruits and forces to control a city of such proportions. And the guy continued to surprise everyone. He proposed not to control Buton at all, but only to take control of the city walls and clear the valuables of the Herman fortification. In theory, the bulk of the troops will be sent to capture the field, and the city will be left without soldiers. According to Sive's plan, you need to capture the walls, control the magic cannon, and take the treasures. Clermont asked if the gentleman would really be able to deliver the equipment to the territory of the Butan Empire. The young man doubted whether he trusted him. The old man was indignant, because he will always believe in his ruler. The Lord announced the battle plan to everyone. Clement and Bane Bloodhoof are heading out tomorrow. He asked them not to hide too much. The enemy needed to recognize you. The ruler allowed them to defend themselves, but not to start a fight themselves. And Sive and the rest of the orcs will take 500 soldiers and move towards Buton tomorrow. At night, he was going to launch an offensive. Once everything was agreed upon, Goodbye decided to throw in his two cents. He proposed not to split up, but to first appropriate the spring and then storm the city. But this idea was rejected because it was logical and too simple, and the army of the Butan Empire was waiting for this. But Sive found a better opportunity to gain time and destroy most of the soldiers. Near the border of the two kingdoms, near the entrance to the copper mine, soldiers from the city of Butan had set up a tent camp for several days. They waited for the side that declared war to attack. Sitting on his throne, in the company of bodyguards, sat the commander. Suddenly, a guy from the reconnaissance squad approached him. He had news that he was in a hurry to tell the knights. The young man told the boss that troops had advanced from the Falcon Empire. The army was not at full strength, and this made him worried because there was no main lord there. Jet asked the scout if the enemy squad was really led by one Clement Knight. Didn't he recognize the lord among the soldiers? Why don't they attack, but settle down and wait for something? However, the soldier confirmed that the leadership had not been seen. Nevertheless, he saw strange mutants in the ranks of the soldiers similar to minotaurs. He called them three-meter monsters. Then Jet ordered to find out why there were no warnings about the outbreak of hostilities, because it was clear that they were also interested in the mine. He did not understand the strange tactics of the enemy. After a while, the knight saw the young man again. He thought that he had carried out his orders. But this was a different person. He was dressed in a black suit and hid his face behind the hood. The stranger said that he had come to help defeat Lord Falcon. To prove his words, he held out an envelope. Then he added that what worries him most is the location of the main enemy. After accepting the envelope, Jet still didn't trust the man in the cloak. He asked directly why he could be trusted and what he wanted in return for the help offered. The stranger said that if the army of the Butan Empire was victorious, he wanted half of the profits from the mine. He didn't ask for anything else. Hearing this, the knight was furious. How could he ask for such a thing for some kind of service? Because it is unclear whether he will help his army at all. 
This reaction from the commander was expected for the guy. He calmly took off his hood and said that he would not be able to stay in the black if he decided to refuse his help. Night was falling on the Butan Empire. The day passed as usual and there were no signs of anything terrible. However, the Lord's plan began to be carried out. And he, in the company of the Bloody Hoof Clan, was already standing under the walls of the great city that he wanted to rob. Clement was right. Now the ruler was convinced for himself that even with his abilities, he would have to spend a lot of time to destroy the walls of the county. Having chosen the desired location for his siege installations, Sive called the system to buy ladders. A few minutes later, the system exchanged the points. Through the portal, two assault ladders were successfully activated. The orcs witnessed this unexpected appearance of technology, and they waited for further instructions from the commander. The Lord went to the other side of the palace. He decided to get into the castle alone. And Charles ordered the orc to monitor the troops and equipment. The palace guards were dozing at their posts. The soldiers did not expect that today would be a hot night. The guard on duty noticed a golden glow behind the walls. Then the silhouette of a man appeared. When he realized that the enemy had infiltrated the empire, he immediately reacted. He automatically prepared for battle. Shouting that the enemy was very close and we were being attacked, he woke up the rest of the soldiers. Prepared people quickly responded to the alarm of the duty officer. The sniper was already aiming at the night guest from a magic cannon, which was located opposite, where Falcon's troops were left. Charles was already standing behind him, who had seen how to operate this weapon. When he memorized simple combinations, he threw out his teacher and took his place in the cockpit. The orc took up the magic cannon to help his master a little. Pressing the lever, he pointed the muzzle towards the beginning of the battle and a charge of destructive energy flew. This was the Torrent's finest hour, although he felt like an executioner. But this gun made him just a killer. He liked the new toy so much that he couldn't stop. When C. Vey approached the cannon, he ordered the heated Charles to place several knights on this side. After all, there are several more cannons in the palace. The Lord was going to capture Count Herman himself. The system issued new missions. 1. Take the mine. 2. Clear the fortress. 3. Send the head of the great knight to Lord Anzung. The Falcon's army stood at the appointed place when Clement broke the long silence. He didn't understand why Lord Booten didn't attack them, because it wasn't like him at all. At the first opportunity, the suspicious ruler always attacked, but now he is playing for time. Their scout was approaching the camp. He had bad news for the commander. The soldier said that he decided to reconnoiter the situation in the enemy camp and was horrified to discover that there was no one there. He said that he personally checked this information but did not see a single person. Judging by the tracks, they retreated. Then, frightened by the news, Clement realized that they had not won but had lost time. He orders Biden to move towards the fortress as soon as possible. And at this time, the treasuries in the fortress were being emptied with might and main. Sive and the Tauren filled their pockets with gold, and what they could not carry away was burned on the spot. The ruler was jubilant because, having moved to a new level, the system no longer persecuted him. Now he began to like tasks that became truly gangster. Having found another cache of gold, the young master orders that everything be taken out. Obedient orcs rushed to take up the new instructions of their commander. Before they can carry out the order, a cage falls on them from the ceiling. Is this a trap that someone set for them? Or have these treasures simply always been guarded this way? Not seeing any obstacle, one of the orcs decides that he is able to get everyone out of the cage, but the iron bars did not yield to the powerful paws of the minotaur. It turns out that this is an unusual cell. Realizing this, the Lord decides that if he doesn't succeed, then with his abilities, he won't even try. Sive simply waited for the inventor of this pen to appear. Count Bud appeared at the door and told them not to resist because it was impossible to open the cage from the inside. The design is designed to absorb their powers. Sive at first thought that his opponent was acting dishonestly, but he remembered his plan and decided to wait for the outcome of this situation but he did not have a backup plan. He asked the enemy if Clement had really lost since they were here, but Jet said that they don't even know, and perhaps in time, they will understand why he has not attacked them yet. 
Taking hold of the cage, the young master began to try to find out more interesting information. He was worried about how the Count knew that he was in Hermann. He wanted to know who the traitor was who had spilled the beans. Count Bud laughed loudly in response. He recalled the young man's age and the fact that he was not yet very good at understanding people. Approaching his prisoners, he advised them not to trust anyone else. And sticking his sword through the bars of the cage to touch Lord Falcon's neck, he added that it was also not worth getting involved with anyone. The next moment, Count Bud swung to kill the defenseless hero, but someone prevented him from finishing what he started. His sword rang and flew far back. Who else could commit such an attack on the owner in his own home? Clement stood at the entrance. The expression on his face was normal. The old man apologized to the amazed audience for being late, and the gentleman is now in this position. Count Bud continued to have fun. He admired how quickly the old man managed to break through the encirclement. But let's not forget that there is not just one Earth Knight in the room, but four. Without listening to him, Clement demanded that Mr. Seve be released, otherwise their reinforcements would raise the city to the ground in the blink of an eye. The Count laughed again at the threats he heard. He remembered the recent events associated with the execution of the Great Knight and is now completely sure that there is no one to recruit people for reinforcements. Having had a good laugh, he orders his Earth Knights to capture Clement. Three soldiers began to attack one experienced warrior. The brave warrior was not at all frightened by the fact that three swords were pointed at him at once. After all, no one discussed the rules of fair combat. So it was not easy for him, but he tried very hard to survive. Watching how the servant was being drained, the young lord kept commenting on the enemy's blow. He tried to help, but forgot that being in this cage, he could not do anything. Quantity still won. Clement was knocked to the floor and a weapon was pointed at him. It seemed that he was about to be killed, right in front of the upset gentleman. But Count Bud intervened in the end. He was ready to give him a new life. After all, a person like him shouldn't die like that. His condition was that he would take an oath of allegiance to Count Ampere. Tired Clement reminded who he is and to whom he is loyal. He had no intention of betraying his master. The Count's laughter changed to pity. After all, he could have just gotten himself an experienced fighter, but he chose death. And therefore the order was given to kill the old man. In the vicinity of Buton, the sun was shining brightly. Birds were flying high in the sky. The weather was clear and warm. But on earth, one could not boast of such calm, because there was a long hour battle between two armies of neighboring empires. The Falcon's army was exhausted because the number of enemies was too many. The two commanders-in-chief, after consulting, decide, since the soldiers are exhausted, to retreat from the battlefield, otherwise they will lose and be killed or captured. Thinking that Clement has passed the encirclement and will definitely save the master, they decide to retreat and think about further actions. Farmers with pitchforks appeared in the background. Who is this? This was the long-awaited reinforcement. The people asked the knights to go save Lord Seve. They promised to cut and stab all enemies to death. It turned out that this was the people's militia. When the master reduced their income, they decided to repay him by exchanging their lives for the lives of soldiers. After all, warriors will be more useful. At this time, one Earth Knight, who had been hired, was already preparing to strike at the very heart of Clement, who was ready to accept his fate with honor. The Knight closed his eyes because he was very sensitive to the sight of blood and he struck the victim with his sword. At this time, the Lord threw a sword from the cage at the knight and cast a spell. The pen was temporarily unsuitable for further use, and the prisoners were unexpectedly free again for Count Bud. The knight opened his eyes and saw that Clement was still breathing. Thinking that it was all due to overexertion because the contract did not stipulate the death of his own kind, he felt someone's gaze behind him, and when he turned around, he saw Lord Falcon free. They didn't understand how the young master could come up with the only secret exit from the unusual cage. The enemies flattered themselves with the hope that they had three Earth Knights who could bring them the long-awaited victory. Believing that the advantage was on their side, they were not afraid to engage in battle. Count Bud ordered his strong warriors to stop the robbers. The soldiers were ready to carry out their master's orders. Clement tried to protect his master because he could not yet take part in the battle. 
But seeing the fighting spirit and the strength that had awakened in the young master, he decided not to interfere. It was like a moment of insanity or loss of reason. Sive, paired with a searing flame, killed all three Earth Knights with one blow. The system helped him, it appeared on time, and reported that the young man had moved to the heavenly night level. Having dealt with the small fish, he was about to deal with the big one. Sive was in a good mood and asked about Clement's condition. But the orc reported that the old man was seriously wounded, lost consciousness, and had not yet come to his senses. The young man promised to take care of him, and upon returning home, he would definitely be given living water so that the wound would quickly heal and his strength would be restored. He also understood that further there would be more wounded and energetically depleted. Therefore, he needed to quickly help Laurie awaken her gift. Meanwhile, the brave Tauren beat the enemy army with their own weapons. The orcs removed the magic cannons and used them as bazookas, thereby saving their personal strength. The surprised soldiers were horrified by such a robbery of the Tauren. They realized that the army of the Butan Empire would definitely not see victory, and the merciless orcs continued to destroy the city. They hurried to report to the master the situation that Bud had been taken. The Hermann fortress had been plundered, and the Viscount had escaped like a rat from a ship. Having heard the situation, what is happening in the city, the army decides to retreat. After all, it turns out that there is no one to protect, and now you need to think about your own life. Celebrating their victory, Sive, Clement and Biden chatted. The old man hurried to congratulate the young master on his new breakthrough to the heavenly night. He sincerely regretted that he had previously questioned the ruler's actions at the meeting. The servant looked sad. He understood that if the people's militia had not arrived, there would have been death. Clement sincerely believed that there were many more titles in the young master's future. He wished the young man to become a crowned knight and then a legendary knight. Inspired by these compliments, C. Vey dared to take a swing at conquering the entire continent. And the leader of the Bloody Hoof Clan wanted to help make these dreams come true. Sitting at the table in his chambers, the Lord reminded the system that he had completed his daily tasks. And it's time to get a reward. The program prepared a military award for the young man, the three-headed hellhound, and clarified that the award had been improved. The Lord of Hellfire is to be expected. See, Vey received 30,000 points for all. Thinking how excellent a player he was, he extolled his luck that he had also received an improvement, and he, terribly, wanted to look at the new warrior. A strong wind began to gather over the palace. It spun around and collected stones and sand, and then turned into a huge stone. Circling around the building, he seemed to be looking for the best place to land. The palace guards and locals, with bated breath, watched the unusual natural phenomenon. This has never happened in Sokol. When the large block took aim, it quickly flew into the castle wall. The flying stone fell directly into the chambers of the master, who was wondering what his new warrior would be like. The young man was angry with the system, because breaking through a wall in broad daylight does not fit into any framework. Eyewitnesses of this incident were greatly concerned about the condition of their ruler. Some even thought that the young man had been crushed by this block. Flame! Death! Ashes! Light emerged from the stone, and when it broke completely, Sarek Zola came out. He was more talkative than all the Tauren combined. The master of Hellfire said that he was ready to serve the Lord. The ruler was, to put it mildly, surprised by the size of his new servant. It was the size of an adult elephant standing on its hind legs. Sive seemed like a bug in comparison. The young man ordered Salikin to follow his words and asked him to put out himself, or rather, the table on which he landed, because a fire was about to start. While the giant tried to please his master, Sive got acquainted with his biography, in which it was said that this is the leader of Hellfire. According to his abilities, he could do lava strike, volcano eruption. The bottom line is that Salikin had superior skills. He was inimitable in everything. And most importantly, it was impossible for him to lose. It's just that there's a real problem with the brain, but by giving out orders correctly, everything can be fixed. Sarek Zola asked why the owner looked at him like that, but instead of addressing him with respect, he called the Lord an insect. 
Sive quickly responded to the insult and asked that no more slips be made. While the guy was busy raising a warrior, rumors that a meteorite had flown into the Lord's chambers reached Lori. She flew into the door, forgot to knock. She was so worried about the master's life. Salakin looked at the maid and said that she was even smaller. He still didn't understand who she was, an animal or a beetle. The stone giant was waiting for them to be introduced. Lori stood rooted to the spot. She again felt fear of her master's terrible visitor. And Sive tried to silence the warrior. The maid's reaction was expected. She began to shield the guy. She said that the monster wanted to eat her. She asked the young man to leave quickly. Salakin, she screamed that her master was tasteless and simply tasted terrible. With her phrases, the girl brought Sive to tears. He was very pleased that she was ready to give her life for him. He told her that this was his new subordinate who arrived in the city today. And Sarek Zola looked at them and it seemed to him that if you compared them, the gentleman did not seem so small. He was also interested in looking at the tauren that the Lord mentioned. The sound of feet and hooves was heard in the corridor. It was the orcs and the guards who fled to the ruler's chambers. They heard a meteorite fly into the master's room and rushed to help. The crowd flew into the chambers and was ready to attack Salakin. Sive thought this would be a good opportunity to introduce everyone to each other. This is such a meeting. It turns out that the stone monster and the orcs were old acquaintances. In the past, they had to cooperate in taking over another world. The Tauren were very surprised where Hellfire came from on the surface. She even thought that the hands of the gatekeepers of Hell had reached here too. They were interested to know for what purpose the Lord had him. The young man calmed everyone down, said that this was a new warrior, and now they would be comrades. He is sure that they will become friends if they find a common language. Everyone was shocked. Charles Bloodhoof immediately began to get smart and informed Salakin that he was a demon and consisted of stone and flame, which was not very safe for the city. He doubted that the master would be able to tame such a monster. But this did not frighten the ruler. He was much more interested in listening to the story of what other world existed and how their work ended. Salakin has already begun to burn. He bent over the orcs and roared menacingly that it was a great honor for them to serve the Hellfire Legion. But the Tauren reminded that they now serve Mr. Sive. The Lord stopped this argument, otherwise they would fight again. He asked everyone to leave. Then Sarek Zola clarified where he would live. Laurie decided to tackle this issue. She was happy that she could help and take away at least a little of her master's worries. Walking around the city square, local residents could not hide their surprise. On the central fountain, in which children loved to play, sat a stone man. He sat with his butt right on the spot where the water was flowing out. But only Laurie was happy in her heart, because she didn't like this splashing thing so much. When evening came in the city and everyone began to prepare for bed, people headed to the palace grounds. They were hidden in black sweaters with a hood, and on their bodies were identical sweaters with yellow crosses. They got wind that the Lord had returned from the capital, and this became the perfect opportunity to kill the ruler. They had everything clearly planned for a long time. But immediately, the company of killers came across one of the guardians of the master's peace. It was an ordinary person. Parker Luther. One of the villains remembered him and wanted to settle the score. A participant in the attack, Wade Hawk, used his wife's blood as an elixir of strength two years ago. But then he did not have the opportunity to thank him. Luther, then heartbroken, promised that when he met his wife's killer again, he would be ready. And so every evening for two years in a row, he goes out to hunt the executioner of his beloved. Wade Hawk was waiting for him to take revenge on him. He wondered how he would do this without any magical power. The old man was angry, because when he saw the villain, he again returned to those tragic events. Luther was delighted, because he was lucky enough to immediately meet his enemy and not have to watch his servants. He took out a red flaming core from the box and ate it. He wanted to quickly fill himself with the necessary strength to take revenge on his offenders. Everyone noticed that he had swallowed the special elixir that made him a heavenly knight. But the price of this potion is your own life. Having split up, the villains began to attack Luther. Half remained to back up Wade Hawk in the fight with the widower, while the others hurried to the ruler's chambers. The duelists' gazes were fixed on each other. 
While resting in their bed, the Lord and his maid were attracted by strange explosions. It looked like a real war had started. The windows of the room overlooked the main square, where the ruler saw that a volcanic eruption seemed to be taking place in the place of the fountain. The peace of the Lord of Hellfire was disturbed by uninvited guests. And since the monster liked to compare people with insects, this time he was not particularly imaginative. A group of people with yellow crosses wondered why there was a creature made of lava in the ruler's residence. After all, no one warned X about this. The people in black began to run away from the lava. And Salakin continued to shout that all insects would be burned alive. He began to hit the road, trying to hit the running villains who were dodging the deadly flame. Watching from the windows, Sive recognized those who wanted to sneak into the palace. He ordered Laurie to bring his sword while she remained in the room. The maid asked the ruler to be careful, and the guy thought that he needed to stop them as quickly as possible, otherwise there would be nothing left of the residence. Approaching the scene of the fight, the young man began to assess the situation and saw several heavenly knights, and they noticed that Lord Falcon himself complained about their showdown with Salakin. Their information that the ruler has the power of the Earth Knight has long been outdated, and now they had to meet with a more powerful force. The company of killers began to turn into werewolves. Immediately, all the werewolves gathered to attack Lord Sive. He had little time left to figure out how to defend himself. The guy chose the weapon power of special blood. It will quickly help him deal with wild dogs. After all, the fight created a lot of noise in the city. The first blow from the ruler killed one of the opponents. The rest of the attackers saw that the Heavenly Knight had finished off the Earth-level Great Knight with one blow. The people in black commented on what they saw. They couldn't wrap their head around how a 25-year-old guy could master techniques that only an experienced master could do. Sive prepared a special reception for them. However, the villains valued their lives. The rest of the master's warriors had already begun to arrive at the battlefield. The company of killers decided to retreat because they had already failed their mission. The ruler got a taste for it. He liked to deal with the bandits alone. He saw how they, having created chaos in his city, were about to escape. The guy was not going to let them go. Across the street, Parker Luther tried to take revenge on Wade Hawk and his men. Having no experience or striking technique, he swung his sword randomly in the direction of his experienced opponents. He was an ordinary man who lost his love, and now the whole meaning of his life has turned into pure revenge. The old man fought as best he could. Hawk saw his men returning. He asked if they had done everything and where were the others. However, I heard that they had to retreat because the ruler was on their tail. They said that the residence was full of monsters and tauren who were subordinate to the Lord. Without having time to report the situation, they are struck from behind by a blow from Sive. Everyone freezes. No one expected that they would have to meet the young ruler himself. The participants in the fight knew each other. The young master could not understand how Parker Luther was still alive. Having learned from the biography that the widower had the temporary abilities of a heavenly knight, C. Vey wanted to know how he increased his strength in exchange for his own life. It was too late to retreat, and the mummers in black cloaks decided to attack together to stop the Lord. The commander of all is Wade Hawk, who does not remain on the sidelines, but also takes part. The young master was only glad that the battle continued, and the uninvited guests did not abandon their idea of killing him. Without much loss of energy, the guy swings his sword, which accurately hits the villains, scattering them across the street. Wade Hawk watched what was happening. He couldn't believe that the Lord was able to reach the high level of Heavenly Knight in a short time. The bandit turned red because he did not listen and did not retreat in time. Hawk thinks about running away in order to somehow escape with fewer losses, but a widower stands in his way and is going to fight until his last breath. Then the leader decides to put an end to this madman. His hands gradually turn into paws with claws. But Parker was ready for any outcome. He had waited too long for this meeting, and even more so, his life would be over. Wade Hawk's hand penetrated the old man's chest to rip out his living heart. The shirt at this point began to slowly turn purple. Sive stood a little to the side, he decided not to interfere in the battle of the duelists. The ruler knew their long-standing squabbles, but seeing that he is losing, the guy waits until he needs to help. The bandit decided to deal with the old man in the same way as he once did with his wife. 
Experiencing unbearable pain, the widower asks the master to put an end to the murderer. An instant blow and he's dead. The fastest way to die with minimal pain. They did Wade Hawk a big favor by killing him this way. Well, Parker Luther lay on the ground, slowly and painfully dying. He asked if it was true that the master had a neko, Lord confirmed. The dying man made a promise from the young man. The old man asked him to be sure to protect her. Sive was able to give his word that he would do so, freed from thoughts of experienced events. The Lord quickly returned to his chambers. He couldn't wait to go to rest. Before reaching the bed, he was almost knocked off his feet by Laurie. The little maid never stopped worrying about her master for a minute, and when she saw him alive, she rushed to hug him. She said that she wanted to go to protect her master to which he replied that when her powers fully awaken, she will become even stronger than himself. Laurie wanted to awaken her gift as soon as possible so that she would no longer hide, become stronger, and protect the Lord. Rainbow rays began to emanate from it, increasing in size. Sive stood in the middle of the room and was blinded by this bright eclipse. Then it began to fade a little, and he could see the silhouette of the maid. The information was revealed to him that this was Laurie, but she was not at all the same because now her strength has increased to level 42. She had many undiscovered gifts, but she gained abilities such as forest rain, rebirth, holy blessing. The ruler carefully called her by name, and a sweet voice answered him. It was undoubtedly her, but her appearance was completely different. Constantly worrying about Sive's life helped her grow. He was in seventh heaven, because now she could warm his bed and conversations about children would not be so empty and meaningless. A medical center has opened in Lindong. Here, rare diseases could be cured, wounds could be healed, and antidote for many insect and animal bites could be obtained. All services cost only one coin. Salakan was left as a bodyguard and keeper of order, who every now and then tried to cope with his anger. He really disliked people, whom he so liked to call insects. After the tragedy that happened to Parker Luther, Laurie was put in his place. The whole city whispered that she was a subhuman and the ruler's favorite. Passers-by began to place bets on how long the next entertainment from the gentleman would last. No one believed in the magical healing powers of Neko. Everyone who knew Luther missed him, but the Lord expected that the locals would have to prove the healing abilities of his now former maid. He had to find people who could advertise the gift of Neko. Many crowded at the doors of the medical center, but no one dared to enter. Then a boy caught the eye of Sive. The child was from the Crete family. The ruler knew this family. Less than an hour later, the baby was already asking Dr. Laurie to cure his sick mother. The woman was coughing and had problems with her lungs. The girl was very glad that they came to her for healing. After all, only by accepting those in need can she gain experience and become more confident. I just want to do what I love and be useful. People began to whisper that the family had lost its breadwinner and that the mother was very sick. But even the priest was unable to heal the woman and therefore the baby could be left an orphan at any moment. Nobody believed that Laurie would be able to cure a person. Everyone was waiting for them to leave the medical center and Neko has already begun to understand the problem of her first patient. After a while, the Crete family came out. The boy's mother was happy, and the child joyfully said goodbye to the doctor. He began to brag that his mother had recovered. I told everyone that my beautiful sister was very strong and radiated white light, which made my mother feel much better. And they paid one copper coin for such a magical procedure. Her friends immediately noticed that her complexion had changed. They couldn't believe that the ruler's favorite actually pulled it off. People did not believe that a copper coin could cure them, but there were also those who hurried home to bring their sick relative to the girl. Chubby Girl has come to town. She was a reporter and wrote colorful posts for the game Continent of Cologne. Little can be hidden from her eyes. She noticed the magic cannons and the medical center. After all, there was always an endless line of patients near him. People crowded at the entrance, waiting to enter the healing session. Chubby Girl saw that the city had a good attitude towards non-humans. She also recognized the doctor as the girl who was saved by Mr. C. Vey. But will it be safe for her to work here? The chubby reporter noticed that someone was watching her from around the corner. The girl asked for a biography of this man. She familiarized herself with the system information and hurried to talk to the gentleman. 
This man was a lord. He watched how his diligent Laurie was doing. Of course, he had no doubt that she would be successful. Near the windows of the medical center, the young man noticed a girl approaching the guy. Chubby Girl was quickly approaching the young man, and he found out that she was the author of all the posts in the game. It was great luck for him to meet the boss of the landscape party in his city. She introduced herself and said that she was researching the customs and characteristics of different parts of the world. Sive greeted her, saying that he was very glad to have her as a guest. The girl asked for an autograph for the general collection. It seemed as if she had already fallen in love with the young ruler. Accustomed to the opposite sex reacting to him this way, the Lord happily signed the notebook. He understood that his popularity had reached different parts of the continent. The distracted ruler did not notice how Chubby Girl threw a thread over him made from a special plant that immobilizes anyone. The young master could hardly breathe, and why tie him up like that? He heard the reporter ask what he did with Saint Zoe then. The girl skillfully held the lasso. She told the young man that after their last meeting, when they were alone, the goddess was either hot or cold. Chubby Girl knew that the guy didn't like non-humans much, and besides, all the heroic spirits believed that this was his doing. When Sive realized that this was not harassment from the girl boss, he explained that he kissed the goddess and he assumed that she simply fell in love. He thought that the end of the game could not be changed anyway. The saint will die and the heroic spirits will come to the falcon territory to avenge her death. And Chubby Girl thought the Lord was terribly shameless. But Sive eluded his public demise every time. Now a thought arose in his head. He was planning to go to Chungguan to deal with Zoe's fictional illness. The guy broke the threads that bound him and invited the round-faced girl to accompany him on this journey. He was going to prove to her that he really had nothing to do with it. Sai Vei admitted that he treats non-humans well and will certainly go to the goddess Zoe to find out the true cause of her illness. The girl reporter did not expect such an offer. From the sky, someone's shadow began to hang over them. It was a griffin, which the young man had summoned with his thoughts. And while Chubby Girl was distracted, the Lord tied the girl with her own special threads. Then Laurie ran out of the medical center, who heard that she needed to take a break from work and go to another city. He helped her climb onto the eagle's back, and they set off. They took off, and the ruler's favorite saw that they were not alone here. And the captive chubby girl suddenly realized that the Lord was not lying when he said that he treated non-humans well. There was turmoil in Changguan, that's all, because after the goddess shamefully threw Ye Hao out, he said that he would find a way to save the saint. But after that, no one saw him again. The ruler himself comes down amid cries that Lord Falcon must be killed. He has chubby girl tied up behind his back with whom he can't seem to part. It turns out that now the city is an anomalous point. The heroic spirits saw who had come to them, and the system continued to explain that Ye Hao's fate was divided into three parts, and the goddess Zoe was waiting for death and had two hours to live. The program notified the young man that the cure had not been found and asked the Lord to begin the third stage of the task and kidnap the saint as soon as possible. While the ruler was loaded with system alerts, the players were going to kill the Lord, thereby avenging their boss. Sive could not find a better way out than to take the goddess to the capital. After all, you may need an additional potion from Dr. Laurie's range. Through the system prompts, the Lord realized that this was undoubtedly related to the missing Ye Hao. He reached for his weapon. Those players who stood in his way were wounded by the master. There was too little time for empty explanations and persuasion to give him the goddess, so he decided to take her by force. Having broken into his personal chambers, the Lord opened the door without knocking. With this, he scared the goddess's nurse, who was just changing her compressors. Saint Zoe was lying on the bed and didn't even open her eyes. She seemed exhausted and tormented by an unknown illness. The young master picked up the girl and, making an exit right in the ceiling, flew out. There, in the air, a griffin was waiting for him and another passenger. Carefully holding the saint, they set off towards the capital. The heroic spirits were horrified that they could not stop the ruler from kidnapping their mistress. Feeling that he had become much stronger, the players realized that Si Vei had now become a heavenly knight. And in the palace, it was quiet as usual. Only in the ruler's chambers there was a little fuss. 
Zoe was lying on the bed. She was delirious. Laurie and Sive stood above her. The healer began to get ready to begin treating the sick woman. When the Neko, as usual, put out her hands to fill the body of the weakened goddess with positive energy. How a bad red coating suddenly began to grow over the saint. The session had not yet ended when Laurie suddenly fell, her strength leaving her. The frightened guy rushed to his pet. He asked her if everything was okay. Fortunately, she quickly stood up and admitted to her ruler that she was unable to cure the goddess, but she could temporarily control the symptoms. The case turned out to be unique. Sai Vei reassured her because she had spent the whole day non-stop wasting her energy on treating the townspeople and, understandably, she was tired. Then Laurie told him about her feelings about the sick woman. An evil force has settled in the girl's body and therefore the goddess cannot wake up. On top of that, the demonic energy constantly shows her nightmares. She needs to get rid of them herself. He thought if they couldn't help her directly, he could at least try to rid her of her nightmares. The Lord began to tell her what she did and who she was. Zoe heard his words. She was in her nightmares. The dark forces of the Inhumans surrounded the goddess. But the voice of Sive continued to tell her that all the Inhumans were waiting for her return, that they needed her protection. The demons shackled her with their dark chains. She was ready to submit to them if only they would stop frightening her. Her thoughts were with her people, and at some point the darkness gave way to day. Now the goddess was drowning in the deep ocean, but even there she was not alone. She was pursued there by demons who pulled her to the bottom, not allowing her to surface. She begged them to leave her. The saint stretched out her hand, thinking that someone would help her. And she felt someone tightly squeeze her palm and begin to lift her up. Zoe couldn't believe her eyes. Lord Sive held her tightly in his arms. She asked why he was here. In response, the girl felt the ruler's hands stroking her. He told her that he had come to corrupt the saint. He got punched in the jaw for his intentions. The ruler expected a slap in the face, but for an innocent joke, he received a blow with his fist. Actually, he loved the obstinate. Zoe demanded to let her go, and he only benefited from her desire, and he threw the girl off the griffin. Luckily, they almost landed and she didn't crash, but she stepped on her foot unsuccessfully and sprained her muscles. The girl winced in pain, and the Lord caught her. He reminded her that they were in a dream, and she could not truly feel pain. The goddess listened to her body, and it turned out that he was absolutely right. She pushed the Lord away again. Then she heard that he got into her nightmares with the help of the scroll of Neptune. If the young man had not been transported here, she would already be dead. Goddess Zoe asked why he decided to save her. He didn't want to find himself guilty again, but he laughed it off as if he was afraid that the girl would die. The ruler knew that people would then say that she could not survive without his unearthly beauty. After all, he really considered himself incredibly handsome. But the saint only made sure that he had not changed. Taking her hand, the Lord hurried to find a way out of the land of dreams. After all, this place seemed completely unsafe to him. They wandered around the deserted city, looking for something strange and unusual. They held hands like a couple in love. The temple of the goddess caught the guy's eye. He thought that she was most afraid of going there, which meant that this was the way out. As he approached the church, he felt it trembling more and more. Two personalities fought inside the girl, an obedient nun and a depraved beauty. And Zoe realized that she did not want to enter the holy place at all. But the young man didn't accept refusals and, throwing her over his shoulder, forcibly carried her to the temple. He felt that there really was a way out, along the way they saw a statue of the previous saint, the goddess of nature. Malorn stood alone surrounded by candles. After comparing the past and present, Sive admitted that Zoe is not as beautiful as her predecessor, and almost getting it from her again, the guy changed the subject. They continued to look for a way out. When they disappeared into the temple, the eyes of the statue turned red. This only meant one thing. The girl's nightmares were not over yet. They walked along long corridors. Listening to their footsteps, the couple came across a door. They decide to come up and look inside. Sive opened the door. The guys saw an adult note giving a lesson to little subhumans. This room reminded Zoe of her orphanage from the past, where she was a child. But the Lord reassured her, 
because they were in her nightmare, which means that she must be prepared for any memories. Feeling that strangers had come to the lesson, the teacher began to drag her nails along the blackboard disgustingly. She was silent, only making creaking sounds with her fingers. Noticing another door in the classroom, the ruler began to drag the goddess towards it. But she stopped him because she noticed her mentor's not very friendly attitude. A mark in the form of a skull appeared on the teacher's neck, and after that the kind girl seemed to be possessed by something very dark. A long pointer appeared in her hands, which she waved, asking the class who dared to open their mouth. She then told Zoe to return to her seat. But she was an obedient student who always listened to Mrs. Maria's instructions. The saint moved from her place to sit at her desk. Sive tried to stop her and remind her why they were here. But the mistress was not satisfied with Zoe's answer, and she, like a fury, flew to the guys. The young master himself was a little scared of such a fierce teacher. The young man put out his leg to stop Maria because she wanted to get closer to the goddess. From such a push, her eye even twitched. As she stood up, she seemed to have forgotten what she was about to do. Hitting one of the pupils with her pointer, she ordered them to sing. At that same second, the children's fingers began to scratch the desk. It was like a real horror movie. The children simultaneously creaked their fingers and this sound was disgusting to the ears. But this was only an introduction, because then the students stood up and began to make sounds of screams. Sive didn't really like their song. He even covered his ears, because these terrible sounds penetrated to his very bones. They were impossible to tolerate. The goddess listened to these cries that caused spiritual pollution. She understood that everything corresponded to her childhood memories of growing up in an orphanage. And then the teacher, with a bad character, wanted to find out who stole her glasses. She was going to punish him with 50 canes. But the students were very young and did not know how to lie well, so the lady quickly found the thief. Saint Zoe asked the Lord not to make noise. She remembered that the teacher had poor eyesight, which meant she couldn't see them, but she had keen hearing, so it was better for them not to move. They spoke very quietly, but it was enough for Mrs. Maria to figure out where they were standing. The young man only had time to grab the girl and jump when the ferocious teacher rushed to destroy the desks near which the children stood. The guy did not understand such methods of education, but on the other hand, he understood why Zoe liked to wave her fists. The Lord took out a gold coin and threw it to the other end of the class to distract Mrs. Maria. It worked, and the blind teacher began to take out her anger on the other side of the room. C.V. decides this is the right time to run away. Entering the door, they understand that they will now find themselves in some other space. Another world and new memories await them. They are now in the room of the current Lord of Falcon County. A huge doll lies face down on the floor. The guys fall right next to it. Feeling Saive's right hand on her chest, Goddess Zoe angrily calls the young man a pervert and demands that he remove it immediately. But the young man liked to get the saint, and he put his left hand on the other breast, while saying that he was not aware of what she liked on the other side. After looking around, they recognized the room of the city chief. The young master guessed that the space in Zoe's nightmare was divided into rooms with which her painful memories were associated. They again began to look for the door to the next space, when behind them the doll slowly began to come to life. Surprised that the girl had so many different terrible memories, the guy could not understand where this huge doll came from because it had never been here. Rising to his full height in front of them, it was not difficult to guess who it was. The ruler recognized himself in this doll. The Lord was shocked, and the goddess felt very ashamed of such a memory. The guy grabbed the doll and began poking the goddess with it, telling her that the doll resembled a man who was now saving her and risking his life. They notice a door where the effigy of Lord Falcon lay. But going into a new memory, the young man could not come to terms with the fact that she considered him a doll. Walking along the dark stone corridor, the frightened goddess tried to find the positives in her fear. At least they managed to freely leave the room without fighting or fear. The girl was always afraid of the dark, but when she saw the light at the end of the corridor, she thought it was a way out of the nightmare. The guys were in a hurry to get out of here, but Saive heard quiet footsteps as if someone was following them. Zoe asked him why he stopped. The girl turned around and saw Malorn. It was the animated statue they had seen at the entrance to the temple. Now she stood in front of them as if alive, holding a leather whip in her hands. 
she came to punish the saint again because she still had not memorized the scriptures. The evil predecessor ordered the girl to be locked up in a dark cell. And so, locked in a dark room, she asked for forgiveness and promised to learn everything, if only she would be released as soon as possible. The ruler could not take his eyes off the goddess Malorn. He has already begun to imagine erotic scenes with her in the lead roles. He thought that he would find a common language with her and they could have some good fun. The guy greeted the revived goddess, but in response, she pierced him through with a magical chain, lifting him almost to the ceiling. Now he was not as happy as at the beginning. The guy realized that her strength exceeded the strength of the heavenly knight. He began to think about how he could win, because when he's attacked in the territory of the Kingdom of Dreams, the power of the Neptune scroll weakens. He had a plan. Since this is Zoe's dream, then only she can save him. He asked the girl to imagine that he was the most powerful person in her dream. But how can she imagine this when there is a dark insulator in front of her eyes? Little Zoe sits alone in a cold dungeon and cries. The baby tightly clutches a pink hair in her arms, which, in her opinion, saves her from loneliness and many fears. And what do you think? She turns Sive into this hair. Only a small bunny, but a huge pink hair. The young man did not try to figure out why this was so, leaving the showdown for later. The plush idol broke the magical chains and struck back at the goddess Malorn. But she also decided to reincarnate. She took on the appearance of a terrible goblin, with long fingers, sharp teeth, and a head similar to the brand of the neck of the teacher of their recent memories. The power of the scroll began to dissipate, which meant that the Lord was leaving the goddess's nightmares and now she would have to find a way out on her own. Before disappearing, he asks not to disappoint him and to wake up quickly. The girl promised that she would soon find a way out, and in the Cane Abyss, in the territory of demons where the earth is soaked in blood, someone will face severe punishment. Ye Hao was thrown onto the carpet towards the main Satan. He was supposed to lead the Inhumans to invade human territory, but things didn't go according to plan. A demon began to emerge from the young man. He screamed that he only lost because he wasn't given more power. And he had to take advantage of the Abyss's offer for the sake of temporary power. Yahao tried to justify his actions because he considered the prediction skill to be useless. And he simply could not silently watch his woman being kidnapped by the disgusting CV. The main demon called the guy and Zoe vessels. His people were to learn everyone's divinity and occupy their bodies. But the young man exchanged everything for the powers of the abyss, and now the demon's plan has failed. Ye Hao was given one last chance, but they had to hurry and start the second birth as soon as possible. Laurie looked at the gentleman in the arms of the goddess and wondered when he would wake up. The maid remembered how Miss Chris talked about such a bed scene. Close physical contact can help provide a sense of security. You just need to choose the right outfit. And when the gentleman woke up, Neko wanted to take him while he was still warm. When she was choosing which outfit she should change into in order to please the Lord, she was frightened by a bright lightning bolt. The maid thought it would rain. Returning to the bed, Laurie was holding in her hands an injection of medicine that was supposed to awaken the young man. How he himself woke up. Sive still doesn't understand whether he has returned to reality or is this a continuation of St. Zoe's dreams. He stopped his hand with the injection and asked why the girl was dressed like that. Laurie explained that this was necessary to awaken the guy, and she added that Miss Chris's methods work flawlessly. She looked very beautiful. He asked to dress like that only when they were alone. After all, at this rate, the entire continent will think that the ruler is a pervert. And then the young man remembered the words of the chief of the guard, who told him that every real man can have his own fetishes, and this is quite normal. The Lord looked at Zoe. He was sure that now her life was not in danger. After that, he called Laurie to rest for a while. Then the Neko told him about the bad weather outside the window and reminded him of his words that when the girl awakens her gift, she can start making a child. Now the Lord understood why she worked so hard at the medical center. Only the young man could not come up with the words of the system, which kept repeating how weak Laurie's body was and that there was still a threat to her life. It was just terrible. The guy hurried to escape from his chambers. He told the girl to sleep because tomorrow she would have emergency care at the medical center. 
the young man apologized and said that it would be better this way. And then the system suddenly overheated and began to produce information one after another. The Lord was credited with 20,000 points. There was an update, then she launched the second branch of the game and finally invited her to the store. While sorting out the unread SMS, Seve remembered that according to the rules in the second part of the game, there were about 10,000 players. And if they all attack Lindong, he will be able to escape, but the city will turn into ruins. The young man thought that the program had recently become too persistent, and he suggested that in fact the former lord had possessed her. He wanted to check it out. The young master asked if she was following him. After a long silence, she replied that she could only control the situation around the hero. He was glad that all his thoughts were under reliable protection. Saive was familiar with other programs, how they actively manipulate players and can even force them out of their own body. And his system is more reminiscent of a hard-working worker. But the best thing is that she has no power over the player. Now Saive decided to look at the store's assortment updates. For now, first-level military structures were available to him. He saw a guard post for crusaders and archers. It cost 20,000. Then there was the corral, where it was proposed to place orcs and infantrymen. Its cost was also 20,000 points. Shadow Union. You can put gloomy assassins and shadow crossbowmen in it. Requires 25,000 points to purchase. There was also a cave in which monuments and monsters could be planted. The cost of the construction was 20,000 points. The cemetery, even there it was possible to place skeleton warriors and some shooters. It only cost 15,000 villain points. And finally, the Forest Vale, where it was proposed to place dryads and black panthers. It was also inexpensive, 15,000 points. All this information was only half clear. After all, the lord of all the listed troops had only crusaders and archers. He didn't even see the rest of the warriors. Returning to the present time, to real life, to the city of high technology and expensive skyscrapers, a guy was having lunch at the table. At the same time, he read gaming news and liked to play medieval games. When he reached the Available Updates section, he saw that the game Continent of Cain had released a beta version for testing. The young man hurried to his room. Having successfully updated the version, the guy got ready for the journey. The system checked his personal ID and approved the entry. The program greeted the Avatar player and wished him a pleasant game. The guy reviewed the events that happened during his absence. He saw that Saint Zoe had fallen into an endless sleep. Then they showed him how the Lord of Falcon County, failing to keep his word, stole the poor girl in front of the subhumans. He saw Ye Hao feeling guilty. Avatar feels like the main character doesn't understand what to do now. The player requested that Zoe not die. He was angry with the ruler and was ready to spend all his lives to save the goddess. When starting the game, Avatar enters the city square. Where Ye Hao creates the Punisher Association, their goal is to capture the city of Falcon and return the goddess. Having finished distributing tasks, he raises his blade upward. This suggests that you need to go on a campaign to kill the Lord and save Zoe. And in order to show his power and regain trust, the young man reveals his abilities to the heroic spirits. People begin to believe him because they see that the hero has already reached level 53 and the earthly knight must always be aimed at victory. And people began to praise Ye Hao again. Having created a sensation, the young man realizes that he did not waste his time and now the Lord will definitely be dead. Everything is calm at the Lindong residence for now. The Lord is resting with his favorite in his chambers. Realizing that the system has no idea, the guy decides to play in order to get as many villain points as possible. The young man began to tear apart his maid's uniform. He said that she didn't want to warm his bed, which means that the owner would be an evil and formidable pervert. The ruler tried to grab the girl by different parts of her body to make it more believable. The young man threw Laurie onto the bed. She began to shed tears, and he needed it. And to end this role play, he threatened to eat her. And then he heard a message from the system which added 5,000 points to his balance. This is what the young man wanted. Survey suddenly stopped. He said the experiment was over. Laurie, wiping away a tear, she asked how it all went. Did the girl cope? The gentleman was happy. He praised the Neko now every evening before going to bed. She will have to participate in such a performance. 
The maid didn't know how to behave. She covered her exposed parts of the body and decided to ask her master if he had any strange preferences. The guy was afraid that he could overdo it and hurt her, but this was not part of his plans. He tried not to overact. The Lord was confused. He needed to somehow get out of the situation. I really didn't want to reveal the whole truth that he was cheating the program to earn points. Laurie continued to hit the guy's sore spots. She wanted to hear some interesting preferences, which she would take seriously to the requirements of her master. It was as if an alarm clock had gone off in the maid's head. She jumped up and ran to Miss Chris's class. She really asked that the owner wait for her. He began to work on strengthening the city because a new update was coming soon, and he wanted to try new structures because he had not even considered the possibility of escape. The Lord began to read additional information about the outpost. Having learned that you can hire warriors for a separate fee who will obey the owner and have experience in battles. The hero really liked this option and he asked the system to exchange points for barracks. After all, having such structures and warriors, it will be possible to move from defense to offense. The program successfully processed the purchase. Now the guy had 20,450 points left. A location had to be chosen to install the barracks, and the Lord decided to place them in the garden behind the castle. He also bought himself five crusaders and five archers. The program requested gold. Having finished his shopping, the Lord went out to check if the system had fooled him. The heavy doors of the outpost opened, and ten protected soldiers emerged. It was led by the third Jang. His strength reached level 15. He had the ability to strike with a sword and was ready to die for the ruler. Sive asked if he was hungry, but he answered, like a fighting machine, that he was not hungry and did not need additional supplies. The Lord got the impression that they were, after all, devoid of intelligence and emotions. The program announced that a deadly plot was about to begin, and Sive quickly looked through his assignments. 1. Kill 200 players. 2. Kill 500 newbies. 3. Fight back Yi Hao. The young master realized that his new stupid warriors would not be able to cope with the players and hurried to purchase a breakthrough potion before the heavenly night. Having received a bottle of liquid, the young man went to Clement. The old man, as always, was on the training ground. When the owner ran up to him, Sai Vei tossed the vessel with the breakthrough potion to his servant. The young man asked to drink it to become even stronger. Without any questions, he obediently followed the order. The result was not long in coming. A red dome began to appear around Clement, which meant that he had grown to the strength of the heavenly knight. The faithful servant felt this magical power with every cell of his body. He couldn't believe he had made the transition in such an easy way. Clement fell to his knees in front of the owner, who ordered gratitude to be left for later, because now there are more important things that require special attention. The servant quickly responded to the instructions and everyone who was present at the training site began to listen to their ruler, who said that the army had moved out from Chengguan and would soon attack the city. Clement understood that the Lord was talking about war, but he warned him that now was not the time to talk about it. The old man did not understand why the enemies decided to attack so suddenly. There was nothing to do, and he began to give instructions to all the soldiers to prepare traps, large stones, and other devices for the defense of the city to notify everyone about the military situation. He also ordered that all civilians be evacuated by 12 midnight. After hearing the measures taken, Sive calmed down, because Clement's loyalty was worth it. A soldier entered the palace and informed the Lord that the enemy army was a kilometer from the city. Surprised by such haste, the ruler imagined how impatient they were to destroy him. He remembered the sleeping goddess. She needed to be woken up quickly so that she could come out and explain everything to her people. Saive asks Laurie to check on the saint. Perhaps she has already woken up. And he headed towards the city wall. Having reached the main gate, where everything that happens outside the city walls is visible, the Lord receives a message. His crusaders took their positions and the program transferred 20 points to the hero because on the way to the city, one of the players was bitten by a poisonous snake and he received a severe injury. Sive looked through the telescope and ordered everyone to prepare their equipment because the enemy would soon be at the walls of the capital. Another 20 points were added. The player drowned in slurry. Ye Hao had thought of everything. 
He took the resurrection point with him so that beginners with no experience could start the game again. Each hero received a mission. They were offered to kill the Lord and get 30,000 experience and additionally need to save the Saint Zoe. The reward was expected to be either equipment or the title Falcon Destroyers. The number of players reached 5,000. The Chungguan army was shocked when they saw the strengthening of Falcon City, but they pursued personal interests and wanted to make good money, so they went ahead. Sai Vei ordered the magic cannons to be prepared, and how will they prepare to immediately begin fire on the enemy? No sooner said than done. Now the enemy army did not shout that they would rob and destroy. They had new desires to be saved. Seeing the bright flashes, Avatar became interested in what kind of guns these were. He decides that it is not worth crowding, but that it is better to attack in all directions. He said that siege ladders are not very effective and are easy to destroy, and therefore every open lock and every latch is important. Newbies who have no experience suffer the most. Having checked the situation, the Lord understood that it was necessary to destroy their established resurrection points because there were many enemies. He decides to defeat her himself and immediately retreat. Among the enemy army, the young man noticed Ye Hao. He thought that if the child of destiny decided, it means he became stronger. But the player was too far away for the system panel to show his biography. The ruler leaves Clement to look after the army and give orders, while he himself goes beyond the wall to deal with the instigator of the war. The Lord ordered Salakin to take care of the rebirth points. He explained that his goal would be three structures in the form of crystals. The young master asked if the Hellfire Master still had a skill that could destroy a chosen opponent within a certain area. After he finishes, he can be mistaken for others and strangers. But the Lord asked that Salakin should not stay longer than 10 minutes. Hearing the instructions of the leader, Sarek Zola was always ready to kill, destroy, and destroy. He saluted the guy and said that he would do everything. Having finished with one warrior, the Lord moved on to another. Next up was Bane Bloodhoof. This monster was ordered to defend the city wall. The orc asked not to worry. He swore to his new homeland that no enemy could pass as long as he remained as commander-in-chief. Having given orders to everyone, the ruler could go to the showdown with Ye Hao with peace of mind. He took the crusaders with him and prepared to move out. Seeing the main gate open, Avatar realized that their resurrection points would soon be destroyed, and then Ye Hao would become his target. After all, their installations are in the most visible place, and the Child of Destiny shines brighter than the sun, and Lord Falcon is no ordinary hero. Unsuspecting Ye Hao stood right in the center of his army. He protected the resurrection crystals. The hero was sure that as long as he was nearby, no one would be able to get closer to them. Behind him appeared Clement, who was about to take his precious life from him but he managed to dodge the fatal blow. The main character did not intend to die so quickly. Avatar's main player immediately realized how stupid the main player was, but to place important structures so unsafely was idiotic, and he decides that everyone needs to protect the crystals. When the army of heroic spirits saw the district lord coming out of the main gate of the city, then they immediately discovered the information that he was a level 52 heavenly knight nightmare. The players suddenly felt a wave of fear for their lives. They began to prepare themselves that they could cope with it. After all, their number is significantly higher and many have reached level 15 in the game. People didn't see the problem, why should they be afraid, because the goddess Zoe, who is suffering a lot, is waiting for them. They only remembered the reward for the death of the nightmare. Ye Hao dreamed of quickly dealing with Clement in order to fight the nasty lord. The protagonist has already caught wind that Sive has reached the power of the Heavenly Knight. He had a special dislike for him. Now the Child of Destiny was under the protection of a demon, and they don't like to play by the rules. So now he decided to accompany his guide. Due to the Rift of Worlds, the rules of final events can be changed. The Hero's Master said that if he constantly looks back, remembering his achievements, he will stop moving forward and self-destruction of the individual will begin. While the Lord was warming up with the first rows of players, he began to notice that someone had invaded this world. It was strange, and it would be better if it didn't happen. Now Sive did not understand, and had no way to determine who the two-faced player was and how he could live with it. After all, this is a scam. 
The hero stood and tried to determine who is so strong and suppresses his strength. Each participant received an urgent message that now everyone is equal and any blow will cause real damage. This meant that Lord Falcon was now weakened. Someone not only invaded this world, but also revealed the main branch of the boss, Mr. C. Vey. The rogue made adjustments to the levels of all players. An unpleasant chill passed through the ruler's body. Something bad would happen. When the army of heroic spirits parted, the young man saw a stranger who hid his appearance under clothes. He attacked the hero first. The Lord tried to hold the defense of this hidden attack. He relied on his two-handed sword. But a seemingly ordinary fire attack pierced the heroic armor of the protagonist. The stranger rejoiced like a child because not everyone managed to knock down the ruler himself. The amendments in the game really work. The rest of the players made sure that the Lord was now an easy target. Besides, he's already wounded. While one was crying like a girl, the others were going to earn the main points. Saive kills her offender. The young man no longer complains that he had stupid missions. Now it was not so easy to kill even a beginner. That recent chill on the skin meant that the defense of the fighting spirit had become inactive. But he was almost unharmed by the fire. It was an unusual battle. Everyone wanted to win. The young master decides to bring the crusaders into battle so that they can help clear his path a little. The second side also intended to move only forward. Their target was the Lord, and therefore some did not even notice who was killing them. But they still managed to immobilize Sive. Several players grabbed him, some by the leg, some by the arm. Anyone could participate. Out of despair, the young master began to call on the universe for help. This is not how the young man imagined this war. Wounded, he was bleeding, but was not going to give up much less let go of his sword. It seemed to the guy that the players were everywhere. They laughed at him and pointed, preparing to deal the killing blow to win. If players can resurrect indefinitely, then Saive will soon die from exhaustion. And the Lord calls Salakan. A bright green star lights up high in the sky. She is rapidly approaching the ground. Taking maximum acceleration, the Master of Hellfire aims at the three crystals that the Master ordered. The goal has been achieved. The order has been completed. At the sight of the rebirth points, a high column of fire rises, as if after a nuclear explosion. Having finished with the installations, Salakin proceeds to the strangers. All people are insects to him, which he cannot stand. The Chungguan army noticed the hellfire. They didn't understand where he came from. The players thought that since they weakened the Lord, they would automatically summon a nightmare-level boss. Somewhere in the crowd was Avatar. He fought equally with everyone. Due to amendments to the game, everyone forgot about Ye Hao. What happened to him? The player understands that the Lord is just trying to create a distraction in order to destroy the crystals. One of the soldiers runs up to him and says that it is becoming increasingly difficult to hold the rebirth points. Until Ye Hao returns, we need to detain the fire giant and use unshakable defense because the defense capacity was supposed to double. This was an order to all players. Avatar raised his magical staff into the air and began to tell that all their opponents were under the command of Lord Falcon, and the main task is to kill him. His plan was to split up. One part of the players goes to protect the crystals from the fiery man, and the other part is busy trying to kill the boss. The wounded Sive tried to convince everyone that they still couldn't kill him, even by changing the rules of the game and cheating. The young man felt that this was not the end. Suddenly, he felt a pleasant warmth, his wounds instantly healed, and his strength began to be restored. Someone helped him. He was familiar with this glow. The young man turned around and saw that it was Lori. He was very angry with the girl because she was supposed to take care of Zoe, and it was too dangerous for her here. But she did not listen, but only clung tighter to her master. Neko decided to stay and help him, because it was for him that she awakened her gift. And if she can't help him at the right time, then what were all these efforts for? Sive was touched by this act, and he allowed her to stay, but ordered her to stay close and not go anywhere. The girl agreed to his conditions. She said that now it was her turn to protect him. Laurie folded her arms across her chest, and a shield began to grow from there, covering them completely. The shocked players stopped laughing at the Lord. Now they saw that the enemy had fully recovered, and that immunity had also appeared. They wondered who this inhuman girl was, and why is she on the Lord's side? 
people immediately started writing about her in the game chat. They asked what character. Some tried to remember where they had seen her before because she seemed familiar to them. Those who had time began to ask for her biography. They were looking for her reward. He who seeks will find. They learned that she is a special follower and is very devoted to her master. The players gave up trying to lure her to their side because they did not have the only weapon against her, the Potion of Oblivion. The restored Save decides to continue the battle. He moves towards a bunch of magicians. He and Laurie are protected by the illustrious barrier. Enemies are coming from all sides. The young man orders the girl to hold on tight because he was preparing to fight back and the recoil could be very strong. Save fired Lion Strike towards a large cluster of enemies to get even closer to his target. Realizing the Lord's intentions, Avatar ordered to cover the magicians. He set up soldiers to interfere with the enemy at any cost, even at the cost of their lives. At any cost, for some players, meant grabbing their legs. The young man considered such methods of fighting to be dirty tricks. Meanwhile, Avatar was busy commanding the magicians. He ordered them to get ready and concentrate all their strength. One of the players shouted, Level 3 Fire Avalanche! And there was a loud explosion right in the place where the Lord and the girl were standing. The soldier stood and told what a powerful thing had just been used. In his opinion, this attack was supposed to destroy the shield of the maid and the Lord. But the guy stood in their original place. Having lost 1,300 players who stood nearby, the Lord himself only added plus 10, 400 to his life. How is this possible? Many came to the conclusion that it was impossible to kill the maid. Everyone saw that the Lord was injured, but her shield was very effective, and no matter how many times they attacked, it would still be useless. While she is next to him, there is no point in aiming at the opposite ruler because her healing abilities are very much in the way. Then what should they do? There is only one way out, to wait for death. The Lord cannot be killed. Lindong cannot be conquered by them. Saint Zoe cannot be saved players will automatically respawn near the rebirth crystals. When Salakan destroys the crystals, players will die and will only be reborn in Chungguan City. Saivei ordered the Hellfire Master not to touch the last revival crystal. The plan was that they would block the passage and kill them. None of them will leave here today. One of the players overheard them and began shouting that the revival point would soon be blocked. He ordered everyone to disperse and run, Otherwise, they would simply lose their level. In a team with Salakan, Lord Falcon quickly began to get rid of the heroic spirits. And their souls flew over the city like balloons. Joyful Laurie felt victory. Only compliments addressed to her beloved master were heard from her lips. If you have watched this far, I am very grateful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video because I put a lot of effort into creating it. I would be very grateful if you like this video and subscribe to the channel.